Hello and welcome to round number three of the AK, Ga AK Racing, pardon me, uh, the EV8 V8 Supercars series. We are live here at Simmons Plains Raceway in Tasmania, although in the virtual world right now. So thank you very much for the early, early viewers of the stream. Hope you're comfortable because this is going to be a brilliant night of racing. Of course, we have got Super 2. Sorry, Grid 2 and Grid 1 tonight. Uh, we will be bringing you at least two races for Grid 2 and all four races, if I'm not mistaken, for Grid number 1. So, without further ado, let's have a look at the Grid 2 points. So, as we bring that up, come on Streamlabs, there we go. So, on top we have got Bell after a fantastic performance at Albert Park, uh, a first and a second. He heads the way ahead of Simmons, then French Hallett, Van Wingard, McIntosh, uh, who was leading the series going into round number two, but a shocking round at Albert Park. I've seen him tumble down the leaderboard. And we have Benny McKenzie. Well, unfortunately, missed all that. <laughs> so but you can read through that yourself. Uh, really close and fascinating championship. Uh, starting to formulate as we get on with the season. Let's take a quick look at our track map. So we are here at Simmons Plains, of course, in Tasmania, fantastic little circuit, a little bit tight, a little bit twisty, a little bit fast. Of course, not really sure what to call that. It almost looks a bit like a, like a shoehorn. Um, in fact, that's what we're gonna call this track, the shoehorn. So of course the track is 2.4 kilometers long. It has seven corners, average speed of 167 kilometers per hour, which is the same average speed of, as Albert Park, as you can see there. Uh, track highlights the braking zone between turn one and turn two. As we see in real life, the track rises, then falls. Very easy to grab a brake and end up understeering off the circuit. Then, of course, the hairpin at turn number four. Expect to see some action going on here. Uh, that is a very, very tight hairpin. A little bit banked, uh, certainly a good passing opportunity, but uh, you've got to make it clean, and that is going to be the hard part. You're hitting almost top speed down that uh, front straight towards turn number four, and you've got to pull it up to the slower speed on the track. Uh, so very, very difficult to make a passing move there. Traction limited in the final sector, of course, between turn number six and seven. Trying to balance the car, turn the car, change gears all at the same time. And it's very easy to go a lap down. That is a, that is a very good point. It's a very small little circuit. So you've got to make your pit stops, time your pit stops absolutely perfectly. So as we come through laps, there we go. So let's bring up our grid two. Does that work? That's worked, there you go. Uh, right, let's have a look around the circuit at who is actually on track. I'm gonna have to bring up Sterkarcel, where is it? We've almost got everyone in the server right now. He's not on track, he's not on track, he's not on track. Come on, someone's gonna be on track. Someone be on track. There we go, we got Bretherton, he's out on, on, on his outlap. He's gonna take us for a quick ride around this circuit. So, hopefully he doesn't bin it. So this is perfect timing, because he is about to start his uh, flying lap around this little circuit. As you can see, you can hear him balancing the throttle, trying to get a good run onto the main straight and get a good start to this lap. And over the crest, easy to lock the brakes. As you can see by the tyre marks, all the witness marks there. A lot of people have already done that in their short practice session. Now you've got to try and get the power down smoothly over that little rise through the right-hander. Up through the gears, reaching about 230 kilometres per hour, then hard on the brakes. We're going to be coming back down to first gear, I think. Yes, we are. Now, Brotherton, he's going for a late apex, trying to get the drive out of the hairpin and up the straight. Now, this is one of the only times that you're going to get a little bit of a break on this circuit. This long right hand to turn number five before we make our way into turn number six. Hard on the brakes, back down to third gear. Just clip the curb nicely, run onto the exit curb, feed the power on gently. Balance the throttle, balance the slide, grab another gear, and that completes a lap. So good enough for sixth in this session. 
but uh, certainly a uh, good lap nonetheless. Oh, bit of a drift there for Bretherton. So, unfortunately, our our camera angles are not quite properly set up. So, unfortunately, we're gonna have to deal with a little bit of shoddiness with our cameraman. But uh, nonetheless, we should have a good night of racing. Hello to Gus113. I, I did see you. I did see you uh, say sub. I was working on it. But, uh, thanks for the follow as well, mate. Uh, also, actually, big thanks to uh, Dog's Body One, Gus113, and DG101 Bob, our latest followers here on Goras Promotions. I uh, hope you're enjoying the streaming. Hope you're enjoying the action, and uh, hope you're going to stick with us for a couple more races in the future. Of course, uh, we've got a fairly big week coming up. We have got round number four of the of the Go Race Promotions Sim Sports uh, Super GT Championship. And Super GT currently running live as well. They're racing at Twin Ring Motegi, but uh, this uh, this uh, coming Thursday, the Go Race Promotions Sim Sports Super GT Championship that will be running at Yas Mariner. So, one of the positives of sim racing, I suppose, you can uh, race wherever you wherever you damn well please, as long as you can find the uh, mod for it. Well, let's have a look at this guy here, Benny McKenzie. Currently setting third on the standings, as we're currently counting down to qualifying, which should take place at five o'clock uh, Eastern Daylight Savings Time. And that is, if I'm not mistaken, probably about 10 minutes away. Eight minutes away, I was close. Uh, Benny McKenzie, we've uh, certainly seen this guy starting to improve. In fact, he's going to take the long lap. Oh, here we go, Franson in the... Goodyear Mustang. Making his way through turn number three. Franson currently fifth in on the timing board. I'll have to bring up the... There we are. Uh, almost. So, Franson currently 11th in the point standings. So that's not a bad jump from him, actually. He jumped up six positions uh, after Albert Park. So that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good, uh, pretty good jump for him. And I'll tell you who has moved up through, I'm not sure if he's actually in the server. Doesn't look like he's in the server tonight, but that was uh, Roundtree. He, uh, he had jumped up uh, 16 positions after uh, after Albert Park. And if you want to see what happened there while you're waiting, uh, quickly jump onto our YouTube channel, because that is where you'll find all of our live streams. So, yeah. Hope to see you subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. Have a look at uh, Franson's avatar there. Actually, where, where is... Uh... There we go. <laughs> That's right, I was sent this by, uh, by uh, Simmons. Sent me a preview of the new look dash for the V-Power racing team. And uh, that is... Uh... That's quite amusing. As uh, we see McIntosh, he bins it coming out of the hairpin. So, in fact, he's inside. He's inside his teammate there. So, as we look at Van Wingard now. In the Terratech uh, Altima. Almost called the Pulsar again. Absolutely a Nissan Altima. That was probably not far from a Pulsar, really. Anyway, and Wingard currently fourth in the session and four tenths off. Oh, pardon me. 
four tenths off the pace of Connor Bell. And Connor Bell really has been, uh, well, if we actually try and find him. There he is, he's on track now in the Shell V Power Mustang. Uh, Bell is certainly one to watch in this, in this championship. In grid two, he's uh, certainly proven to be super competitive and uh, super quick as well. Uh, we saw him at Albert Park. He had a bit of a, he had a, well, he started from the rear field for race number two and worked his way up to second by the end of the race, which is absolutely outstanding performance from, from the young man. And I do believe he actually streams as well. So if you want to try and find his Twitch channel, that'd be awesome as well. Go give him a little bit of support. And though we have a bit of carnage up in turn number two, cars going everywhere. We got uh, one of the Altimas off the track there. Oh, and well, as we can see, Benny McKenzie uh, made a mistake into turn number five. Sorry, turn number four. Begging your pardon and just recovering from that gravel trap. Of course, we've seen a lot of people go off at that corner. In fact, we're gonna go and have a little fly over to this uh, corner here. So, I think we all we all remember when uh, everyone hit the patch of oil and uh, we're all bunched into this uh, gravel trap here. As you can see, got some witness marks already with uh, people just uh, maybe not getting their braking right. Here we go, we got Benny McKenzie here. We're gonna follow him live into the corner. Does he pull it up this time? He grabs the grass, but he still pulls it up. So, as you can see, very tight corner. And uh, the banking, if I can just get the camera exactly where I want it to be is uh, quite a serious bank, actually. So, but uh, let's keep an eye on this corner going into, well, on lap number one in both uh, grid one and grid number two. Uh, another crucial corner that we're gonna see a lot of action at is turn number one and two. see drivers encouraged to use the curbs but uh, it's this crest here as you can see some smoke signals there from Franson so very easy to grab the uh, inside front brake and uh, well, run wide going into turn number two uh, of course once you grab that brake you're not slowing down very well but, uh, we talked about it on the on board with Bretherton but uh, turn number six turn number seven Got to be so, so smooth with the throttle. You have to be so balanced. And I'll tell you right now, it's not easy to accelerate one of these cars, grab a gear, balance the oversteer, balance the throttle. As you can see, uh, I believe that was, uh, I want to say that was Macintosh, just struggling with the V-Power Mustang there. Oh, there we go. So turn number six as well course a uh, very heavy braking zone as well very easy to go very wide and off into the grass there as we saw one well we've just seen Mac, Max Gawiak in the monster Mustang get this name right, I swear. Max Gawiak. So obviously this early in the session and in this early into the night indeed, it's uh, going to be very difficult to pick a winner, but let's get some early predictions in chat. 
Uh, what are we predicting in qualifying? Love to hear your thoughts. Okay, so <laughs> so we have a uh, our, our safety car on track, and it uh, looks like he has binned it at the at the hairpin. Yep, there we go. Go, on, mate, send it. He's not going to do it now. Did think I saw something funny uh, just in the background there with the camera, so. Not really sure what the plan is here, but uh, but, uh, well, Go for a wander down pit lane and have a look at uh, some of the cars and the drivers that are getting ready to do battle here tonight. As I would say, with uh, most of the drivers in pit lane, I would say that we have got drivers briefing underway. But, uh, certainly, this is going to be a super exciting qualifying session. As we have, oh, look at that, we got some burnouts happening here in pit lane. That's going to be a that's going to be a that's going to be a battle. Paddling from the stewards. Yep, that's a paddling. They're getting a paddling. So, so we get set. Let's uh, let's try and position our camera somewhere. There we go. That looks pretty good. So, let's actually uh, run back to the pits and we'll run through what we have for you tonight. So we have two 55 lap races on for you tonight. That is going to be super exciting. Of course, 51 second lap time. It's uh, going to be a pretty quick race, I have to say. Our drivers are all in uh, the driver's briefing. They're getting set for a start. We are set for a start. Uh, hopefully everyone at home has got themselves a nice cold beverage, maybe a couple of snacks. Uh, and I hope you're sitting down to enjoy this this round of the EV8 series from AK Racing. But, uh, as I said, let's get some predictions happening in chat. I uh, would love to know what you think, uh, who's going to be the top driver in qualifying. And of course, uh, give us some predictions as to what's going to happen in the racing. And of course, I am expecting a bit of carnage for uh, for turn number one and two. Basically, every single lap. That's my prediction. And a bit of carnage in the hairpin every single lap. Uh, already got an early prediction for Benny from P1. So the Ben Ben McKenzie fan club is already in the chat, which is great to see. Hello, everyone. How are you going? So uh, that's something new I've only just seen. I bring it up. That's uh, not what that's not what I saw. Not what I saw either. That looks like what I've seen. So that's looking pretty cool. That's cool. Uh, it looks good on the FGX too. Well, that's not so good. Yeah, we noticed the safety car was on track. That's pretty cool. I like that. Whoever whoever designed this, whoever transferred it over, that's uh, that's pretty good. Uh, give yourself a pat on the back. 
but I wonder if there are any surprises inside the car for us. Ah, no. That's disappointing. So that is, of course, Donnelly in the number five FPV racing Ford Falcon. So that is a really cool looking livery. Like I said, looks very good on the FGX. What do you guys think? Oh, we got a, got a beach party going on at turn number four as well. So, it looked like uh, one of the Goodyear cards. So, probably, I want to say, needs white rims. No, 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 no. Black rims. Black rims all day long, Routers. Suggesting white rims is a, is a, is a ban. Is a bannable offence on this channel. <laughs> It's all jokes. It's all jokes. So let's have a quick look around, see if there's anyone else. So we got Andrew. Uh, nope. Nope. Someone will be on track. Here we go. So right. Uh, certainly a driver who turned heads last round. He. Uh, Certainly very, uh, very aggressive and uh, quite successful at uh, Albert Park last time out. Yep, that's it. That's it. Richards has got a ban from the stream. That's exactly it, David. White Rims is a banning. Could be worse. Could be could be fluoro yellow, I suppose. So, as we continue to watch, right as he makes his way around through his first flying lap, I want to say no. This will be probably his second flying lap. At least his second flying lap. the hairpin as Van Wittgaard in the Terratech Nissan gets a little bit sideways just behind. That is really going to be a crucial part of this circuit. So, of course, it is basically two straights connected by a couple of braking zones. And well, you need to be able to get the momentum up very, very quickly. So mid corner and corner exit is so crucial around here. And you also need a car that will change directions reasonably okay. Uh, in particular for turn number one and turn number two. I'm gonna quickly jump on board with right. Oh, no, we're not. We're going to jump straight into qualifying. So we are set for a start. Who's going out first? Let's see if we can't find someone. There we go. So McIntosh will be our first driver on track. So it is now go time. The time for talk has stopped. We are going to get straight into qualifying. So I'll start getting excited, everyone. So we saw in the track overlay that uh, the predicted pole time will be a 51.7. Uh, hopefully we'll see drivers get into that 51 second bracket. And I honestly have a I have a feeling that we'll see low 51s from our drivers tonight. Um, certainly predictions in the past have been totally and utterly wrong. So as we see now, McIntosh starts his first flying lap. He will be the benchmark. As he makes his way through turn number three. 
grabs it up to fourth gear. He's going to have traffic up ahead, though. This is the big problem with Simmons Plains. It's a very small circuit. That was very easy to get balked on your fast lap. So, oh, as we have a car. <laughs> Binnett at the hairpin. This is uh, looking like a pretty smooth lap at the moment. He hasn't been uh, caught up by any uh, lap traffic. So this will be a good start for McIntosh. As he breaks into the 40, 54, sorry, 54.4s. Uh, that is the benchmark time for everyone. I don't see that standing on top as Wu goes with it, goes second with the 56.6. Uh, certainly early days in this qualifying session as straightaway Simmons goes to a 54.3 and a 59.3. Then French up to third. So we're starting to get some times come in pretty quickly. Very hard to keep up with it. As now Licciardo goes up to fourth position. Good time from him. Twit into sixth. And now right into the 53. So right now takes the lead of this qualifying session. Wait and see what he can... What... Oh, McIntosh wouldn't be able to... Uh, able to oh there we go so Franson up to second and 54 2 and Van Wingard straight away and Simmons now to a 53 1 so now the times are really starting to tumble as we have 16 minutes left in this session so still anyone's game and still plenty of time for the track to evolve as well See there, Simmons getting a little bit of wheel spin coming out of the hairpin. He's got traffic up ahead of him. He might be able to use this uh, going down the back straight to try and... Uh, I just noticed the message on the dashboard. Didn't realise there was a different message between uh, McIntosh and Simmons. Uh, Simmons unable to improve on his uh, previous best. No one else has really been able to make a reasonable threat to Simmons' time of a 53-1. So can Simmons improve that lap time? I don't think he's going to do it this time by. He might do well just to return to the pit lane, get some fresh tyres, get out of this traffic up ahead, because that traffic up ahead is not going to help him one bit. As he uh, gets a little bit too aggressive with the kerb at turn number three. to our ninth position man. So Cooley in the Castrol Nissan. He's managed to sneak his way into the top nine. Now Cooley, if I remember, he had a bit of a struggle at Albert Park. He was down in the bottom half of the field for much of round number two. But uh, certainly by now, well, he's just been relegated back to 10th position. After uh, Bell manages to put his Mustang into second position. We go some action straight away. So that looked like uh, well, that was the um, 
Don't know who that was, actually. So, still at the top, it is... Oh, no, Bell. Bell's actually gone to the top of the 53-1. And it is a very tight margin between Bell, Simmons, and Hallett. And Wright and Van, Van Wingarden also not uh, too far behind. Continue to focus on Connor Bell as he uh, goes out for his for rolling well for his uh, outlap. So at least 19 drivers in the server as well. Another great turnout for the AK Gaming EV8 Supercar Series. So now we're going to try and find someone else. So Hallett, he's, uh, he's realistically another one of the threats that uh, Bell has tonight. He uh, certainly is usually there or thereabouts when it comes to racing, but tonight especially, he is driving really well, sitting in third position, less than two tenths off the pace of Bell, which is a massive achievement for anyone. to improve a 54.026. That'll put Bretherton up to 8th position as he gets a big slide. Can he hold it? Yes, he can. A uh, bit, little bit of Tokyo drifting there. He manages to hang on to it. He's now Donnelly up to 10th position with a 54.3. So a great spread of times across, uh, across our field. Really down to 13th position, separated by less than 1.2 seconds. As, oh no, that looks like uh, Kel. Has, uh, has looped it. We just bring up. I want to say that was Cal. Cal. So. He knows how they live in Tokyo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so as we focus on Cal, he's uh, made a meal of it coming out of turn number four. In the Five Lights Photography. Commodore, in fact, uh, looks like he's uh, struggling just to get it going again. Maybe just waiting for a clear space in the traffic. So there we go, now he gets it off the grass and back onto the track. He's uh, not, shouldn't really interfere with anyone else's lap. So we see one of the Mustangs go by, well, a couple of the Mustangs go by, absolutely one of Mustangs at the moment. But, uh, Quickly swap over to this guy here, Simmons. He's just started another lap. And with, uh, about nine and a half minutes left to run in this session. Certainly plenty of time for Simmons to retake that pole position from Connor Bell. the final corner. Might be an okay lap, it's looks pretty smooth so far. He stops the time, a 52.6. So now the cards are starting to be shown early by our man contenders. Simmons making a massive improvement up by up by four tenths over Connor Wright. Sorry, that's not right. I mean, it's right, but it's not uh, Connor Wright. It's uh, just right. So 
we have eight and a half minutes left to run in this session. see some really quick lap times until we have about three or maybe two to three minutes left in the session so right now all these drivers are just working fairly solidly just to work out what setup they need what tire pressures they need what adjustments need to be made to the car where they're strong where they're slow all of the great stuff of racing before they head into launching no, what am I talking about? Oh, right, it's been cleaned up by one of the Goodyear cars, and that was Andrew. So, oh, gee, that is one of the big risks of this track. You get, uh, you can get center punch very, very easily because of that, uh, because of that, um, that crest heading into turn number one. So we have another car off the track, and Simmons is also off the track. Simmons has, in fact, parked at a very interesting location he's, uh, he's gone off to see the fans well looks at things but uh, I'd say he's, uh, he's just sitting there watching some of the other drivers and how they take this uh, hairpin as well like if, uh, if I jump on board whoa there we go so that was one of the Penrite cars absolutely yeeting himself off into the gravel trap glad we we're on board in time for that And while we're going to look at Simmons' uh, teammate. As he gets some good drive out, the, out of the hairpin. So, Macintosh. he do stays eight it is an improvement though but uh, probably not the improvement he would have liked to have seen so, oh, geez, some traffic there for the Macintosh don't know if that's uh, held him up a little bit and he's dropped nine tenths so quite possibly now he gets balked by Andrew on the exit of the hairpin so this lap is a uh, Pretty well a throwaway for for Macintosh. In fact, uh, Macintosh returns to the pit lane very very quickly, and he's back out on track. So we're going to quickly try and find someone else to watch for a little bit. So, well, here's Bell, one of the main contenders for this series, and uh, grid number two, uh, grid number yeah grid two, sorry. He has unfortunately binned it coming out of the final corner. So that's very unfortunate for Aaron Bell. So as we look at now Hallett. Commentator's curse. Uh, what was that? Oh, the basement slob. Thank you for the follow. Hope you're enjoying the coverage so far as we have another uh, beach party down at the at the hairpin. That is Cooley and... One of the... Oh, who, who is that? Oh, that's one of the the other of the Five Lights Motorsport cars. Not really sure who that is, actually. So... As we start getting into the business end of this session, this is where we expect to see drivers start putting in their best lap. So right now it is Simmons on top, ahead of Wright, Roundtree, Bell and Wingard, rounding out the top five.
continue to follow uh, Cooley. He gets a little bit of wheel spin. That might hurt McIntosh a little bit, but uh, certainly McIntosh, he'll be uh, he'll be on his way anyway. Got much better drive than that. Uh, shouldn't have slowed him down too much. As I say that, he uh, does sector time that's two seconds slower than his previous best. through the traffic. In fact, we're going to have a quick look around this circuit just to see, show you how busy this circuit is getting at the moment. So, as you can see, we are hovering above turn number six and seven. And there isn't really a lot of space for these drivers just to get some clear air and just try and focus on getting in the best lap they possibly can. So, certainly... Absolutely messed this up. There we go. So we're going to focus on Hallett for now. He makes his way around the final corner. That's the commentator. Sorry, the camera angle we want. No, it's not. Still not. That's the one we wanted. So getting into the final few minutes of this session so far, Simmons still has a huge lead over Wright, Roundtree, and Bell. Uh, Great to see such a small spread across our top drivers. In fact, you have to go down to ninth position before we find someone who is over a second slower than our pole sitter. Well, current pole sitter, at least. So what can Hallett do this time? It's not going to be an improvement on on his previous best. But hopefully by now he's worked out what he's done, been doing wrong as there we go. We had McIntosh looping it right in front of Hallett. That would have uh, that would have been the brown note, I would say. So we right on board now with the Hallett uh, Mustang. gets around to the final corner. He should be able to get one more lap in if, I, if my maths are correct. And he does indeed get another lap and that pushes him onto the front row right next to Simmons. And he is going to immediately abort this lap. So we're going to try and find someone else who is on track right now. It is right. Checkered flag is now flying for our competitors. frustrating yeah that's uh, that's part of the challenge of Simmons Plains Raceway it's been a problem for time immoral immoral I'm sorry but, uh, right we'll come around the final corner gets some nice drive down the straight what can he do it's a 54 flat he's gonna stay where he is unfortunately and that is the end of qualifying so let's have a quick look at how they're gonna line up for race number one so Simmons, Hallett, Wright, Roundtree, Bell. That is your that is your top five. Then we have Van Wingard and McKenzie. French, uh, French, McIntosh and Franson will round out the top ten. Over the page we have got Donnelly, Bretherton, Licciardo, Wu, Cooley, Williams, Lees, Twit, Hughes, uh, Max Gowiak. And then finally we have got Hubbard, Shadlow, Shadlow, Cal, Andrew. 
and we'll just uh, double check if there aren't any light starters. Uh, Christopher Fraser, no, mate. There shouldn't be any shootout. It is straight into the race. Uh, in fact, I'm going to reposition this camera slightly, and then we're going to have a quick little bathroom break, and we'll be back to bring you the action from race number one. We'll be back shortly. And we are back just in time to start having a look at this magnificent looking field. Have a look at that field just stretching around uh, the back, well, all the way around to turn number seven. And at the very back, that will be, uh, looks like Cal and Andrews. So, where they're sitting, that's what they have to get through. Since I just get the camera right. So, here is your front row. We have Hallett and Simmons on the very front row. Well, we better actually just uh, try and position this camera just in the best possible way. A little bit difficult, actually, but. I think we got it right now, so we'll get set for a start. Let's get some quick predictions in chat. Who are we liking? Uh, who's in top form at the moment? And, well, are there going to be any surprises? In fact, have a look at that. That's uh, Mustang top five. So, wow. So I want to hear your predictions. Don't. Don't hold back. So we have got we got one of them, Simmons, Bell, and Wright. That is a very big call. 
Got to get through turn number one first. Tipping Simmons to make a mistake. One of the other in the uh, in the top five to take the dub. Okay, well, we got the lights up. We're getting them lit up right now. There are six lights on, and there are six lights out, and away we go racing. It's a great start from the front row. In fact, the whole, the whole field has gotten a really good start, but Simmons and Hallett will go side by side to turn number one. Big send coming from the back end. Oh, McKenzie runs someone wide. So, have we managed to get through relatively cleanly? Cleanly looks like we have. We'll quickly run into turn number turn number four. And it does look like Simmons. He's going defensive from, I think there's still Hallett. Wright's trying to poke the nose in underneath Hallett. Are we going to see any carnage here? Oh, look at that. A big send from on the uh, Penwright cars. And managed to hold it together, though. And we have gotten a relatively clean lap number one. So that is great stuff from our from our drivers as unfortunately for Hughes, currently down in 17th position. He's gotten a drive through for jumping the start. So that is not the way you want to start your night. As Simmons now takes an early lead. Oh, look in the background there. We got Bell up the inside of right. That was a great move. I just saw the tail end of it. So now Bell up into third position. What was that? Uh, what was that? What was that prediction? Simmons Bell right. Okay. Well, that's not too far actually. Just need Hallett to make a mistake, and uh, you're on for the run for a win there. Oh, we got someone around. That's Roundtree. So Roundtree has looped it at the hairpin. He is going to have to wait for the entire field to go through before he can actually resume the racing oh in fact he's oh did he thought he went a little bit early there he's going to try and do a bit of a three-point turn but he will rejoin just ahead of andrew so disastrous start there for rancher will definitely keep an eye on his progress as we jump back to simmons hallett has done the fast slap of the race of 53 7 he is currently chasing simmons as the rest of the field has streaked through Looking at uh, times around the 55, 54s. So, for the mid pack. But meanwhile, these guys are battling away. In fact, uh, Simmons makes a bit of a blue out of the uh, out of the hairpin. We're going to jump on board now with Hallett. As Hughes has finally taken his drive through. I say finally, but he's just taken that drive through. Get to keep an eye on where uh, Connor Bell is in the rear vision mirror. In fact, the top three just starting to spread apart a little bit. And they're just starting to streak away slowly but surely from the rest of the field headed by uh, Wright. And Wright is, might be coming under pressure from Ben McKenzie. Although McKenzie is under pressure from France and just behind. Oh, seeing some smoke signals up ahead. That was from Hallett. Oh, McKenzie runs it so deep. He manages to keep it off the off the tyre barrier and keep it going. So uh, this is a great battle for, uh, for these guys here. We jump on board now with Franson. Actually, we're going to go back here with uh, Donnelly as he chases McIntosh's Mustang. It's a fantastic looking uh, FGX Falcon. Oh, we have someone off the track. That looks like Van Wingard. So Van Wingard is absolutely sent it off the circuit. So that is uh, very, very costly for uh, Van Wingard. He's going to rejoin just in front of uh, Roundtree. So that would have almost been an easy position for Roundtree to make up. As Oh, look at this. This is starting to get pretty tight. We have uh, Francis McKenzie, McIntosh, and uh, Donnelly all nose to tail as they come out of the head hairpin. We got another car up the track. Where is that exactly? That that's coming out of t that's out of the last corner. So is that's uh, that's a bit costly for uh, for Shadlow, and he's actually going to go a lap down early in the race. So we're going to 
try and find our camera. There we go. So we got Wright. He's having a bit of a lonely race at the moment. We've got to move on here. Donnelly up the inside into the hairpin. He manages to pull it up. McIntosh has nowhere to go. He might get the drive down the straight. As we now look out the back of Donnelly's Falcon. McIntosh just not able to get the drive down the main back straight, sorry. Donnelly's list will be Ben McKenzie. He's currently hassling the back. Oh, here we go. So, oh no, he's overcooked it into the hairpin trying to get around uh, Franson. He's going to fall back behind McIntosh. He's managed to keep it out of the wall at least and out of that gravel trap. So, we'll be able to take that, that little bit of a consolation with him. Oh, we have someone off the track. It's uh, French. He's, uh, where's that? That's coming out of the hairpin. So the hairpin really proving to be a tricky corner for a lot of our drivers tonight, getting the power down of these uh, V8 supercars. He's gonna lose a few spots here as Roundtree and Hubbard ran him up down the straight. He's gonna fight back straight away on French and French has to give the room, so, sorry. Yeah, Hubbard has to give the room to French. So French back up to 17th already. So... You see in the background there, Hubbard trying to make his way around... Uh, actually, no, that was Van Wingard around the outside of uh, Hubbard. So great move there for uh, Wingard. So he's on a bit of a march now. As he uh, looks for a move on French this time. Has to back out of it. Oh, we got another car off the track. That'll be Cooley. That'll be coming just out of the hairpin. He manages to keep a few positions. That's uh, good for Cooley. The field is just starting to spread out a little bit, with the exception of uh, this little nasty looking pack right here. So they're starting to bunch up. Oh, here comes French. I just see locking up the brake. Cooley off the track again. That'll give Roundtree a run into turn number one. He has to check up. He'll try for a move around the outside into turn number one. This will be a brave move. Can he get it done? He has to pull out of it. That's going to leave him vulnerable to French. French runs it in way too deep. He goes wide and will lose a position to uh, Van Wingard. So Van Wingard gets an easy position up to 17th. And oh, here we go. So it's on now. So Roundtree trying to sneak it up the inside of Cooley. Cooley runs wide again. Roundtree ru runs wide. So. Oh, disastrous for both Cooley and Roundtree. Roundtree does a bit of a bit of a block there, unfortunately, on Cooley. And Cooley has to do a little bit of grass tracking. Oh, we got another car around. Oh, no, not quite. Look, everything's settled down in that battle group there, so we can return to this battle here. So we're looking at uh, Dane Licciardo. As they're all coming up to put a lap down on, I think that is uh, Lee's. Lee's? He's not making it easy, unfortunately. Oh, we got another car around. That's uh, Andrew. I think actually he's uh, pulled over just to let the other drivers through. That's uh, fairly polite from him. But uh, 
Jeez, this battle is uh, tightened up again for... This is for fourth place now, so... Bell hasn't really made an impression on uh, Hallett or Simmons. Simmons are uh, still enjoying a two and a half second lead over, over Hallett. And in fact, for Bell, he's going to start coming under pressure from Wright, Franson and Donnelly. Jump on board with uh, Donnelly's Falcon. He's got the slipstream. He's going to go try and go the long way around. This will be a very brave move if he can get it done. Can he pull it up? More, more to the point. Oh, he's going to go for the switchback. Get the drive down up the straight. Uh, I don't think he got the perfect run. Wait and see what he can do. Coming up to turn number six. It's a little bit of a feint there to try and just distract uh, Branton. So now... Donnelly is coming under pressure from McIntosh and Licciardo. Seems to have settled down for now. So I'm starting to see drivers uh, putting in their personal best as well. So we just saw Hughes there with a 54 7, I think it was. So that's uh, huge improvements for Hughes. It's uh, quite on par with uh, what our leader's doing at the moment. Uh, well, right now this is a game of patience and a game of managing this, the traffic and getting a very clean run into pit lane. And just taking positions where you can. I think I just heard someone loop it in the background. I thought I did, but I was wrong. Oh, I just took a snapshot. That is not good. Not the button I wanted anyway. So we're looking at the back of Donnelly's Falcon. So we're getting a face full of V Energy uh, Ford Mustang. Yes, you're right, Routers. We have a change of the lead. So I did not see that happening. So Howard's managed to sneak up onto the back of Simmons. And he has managed to take the lead. So not sure if maybe lap traffic has played a part in it. But uh, either way, Howard is now out in front of Simmons. Or maybe even Simmons' tyres are maybe a little bit shocked. So he uh, desperately... Gets his way around uh, Cooley's Nissan. Oh, we have a car off the track. We have two cars off the track. It's Shadlow and Roundtree. So Roundtree again finds himself uh, off the track at turn number four. And he'll be right, almost right behind his teammate. And the driver basically harassing his teammate so this will be quite interesting are we going to see some team orders here perhaps oh so Roundtree again goes wide this time at turn number six we have also have another driver off the track at the hairpin that is Hughes so geez the hairpin's really catching out a lot of drivers today 
catches a lot of drivers out in real life as well. And as we now see, Connor Belt has decided to make his pit stop. Currently one of the only drivers in pit lane. A couple of drivers are in pit lane, Andrew and Cal. Looks like how it's just, uh, he's got an answer for everything that Simmons wants to throw at him. Oh, Simmons getting a little bit sideways out of turn number one. Uh, this is a battle we definitely got to keep an eye on. This uh, battle for the last step of the podium is just starting to heat up a little bit. Now he's onto the back of him, on the back of Franson. Close is right up under brakes. Oh, just has to be so patient on the throttle. Didn't want to turn uh, Franson around. and he's definitely under pressure. This is going to give Wright all the net, all the opportunity he needs to get around France in this lap. So heading up towards the hairpin, who's going to be the last of the late breakers? It's going to be France in for now. Wright will go for the switch back onto the back straight. It hasn't quite worked out for him. Didn't quite get the drive off the corner. Not like uh, not like how uh, France did it. This battling is just going to bring Donnelly and McIntosh back into the battle as well. Oh, we have another car off the track. Didn't quite see who that was. Uh, one of the SP entry cars. And, uh, well, here's a driver that I uh, didn't really give much attention to in practice or qualify, and that is uh, Wu. He's, I'm not mistaken, he started way down outside of the top 10, and now he's found himself up into eighth position. So, possibly a driver who just doesn't like qualifying, but is a much better racer. Judging by Wu's race pace, he might be able to uh, latch onto the back of the battle just ahead of him. Oh no, I just saw two names. Oh no, that's our two leaders. So Hallett and Simmons have both uh, binned it coming out of the hairpin. Uh, I don't know what's happened there. I did see that there was a lap car driving off the track. I wonder if they had something to do with it, although Simmons wasn't, didn't exactly rush to pass. I think that might have been a, uh, a redress. So now, are we going to see some of these drivers dive into pit lane? No, we're not.
uh, just seeing uh, Donnelly just dropping down through the through the down the leaderboard. Don't know if he has pitted, but uh, he's gone from fighting for third position down to eighth position. He unless he's uh, unless he's dropped it somewhere between uh, turn seven and the main straight. But either way, Donnelly, in his uh, at least at least to my knowledge, his first experience of the of the Donnelly Falcon. He's uh, certainly outperforming any expectations you could have of him. I do suspect that he will uh, he will be able to get around Bretherton relatively quickly. Uh, ben McKenzie there in ninth position trying to fight back after a disastrous opening to this to this race. Oh, we have another change of lead. So Simmons is now out in front of uh, right, actually. And we've got to find him. So Franson, he... No, it wasn't Franson. That was a uh, lady. Hallett. So I don't know what's happened to Hallett. Uh, I didn't see if he had come into the pit lane or not. But uh, either way, Simmons is out in front. Uh, how it pitted. Yep, that'll explain it. Oh no, Connor Bell is out with engine damage, so that is uh, hugely disappointing for the young man. He was uh, doing really well as well. It uh, is something easy to do in these cars because uh, they don't have a downshift protection system like you would find in GT3 or most other uh, uh, categories of the sport. Oh, we have another drive around that would look like Cooley. So again, turn four, catching out a lot of people. Now, this is your leader, uh, Turk Simmons, in the V-Power Mustang. He's got a fairly comfortable gap, but he still has to make his pit stop. So, right now, he's got to be uh, focused on getting some clear track uh, and just try and prevent that undercut from, uh, from Hallett. So he's got some lap traffic just ahead of him. So, this will be very interesting see how he can uh, pick his way through the lap traffic. Unfortunately, not a lot of action on track at the moment. Everyone's just sort of uh, 
waiting for pit stops to sort of clear their way through. But uh, thank you very much to this Jensen kid uh, for the follow. Much appreciated, mate. Hope you're enjoying the stream so far. Uh, don't go away after this race. We've certainly got uh, some more action. Um, if I'm not mistaken, fortunately we won't be able to bring uh, race number two of the Super of the Grid 2 race because uh, we do have to swap over to our Grid 1 race. Oh, wow, that's, uh, that is Cooley way off the track. Well, well, way off the track. I think he's going to need his pass just to be able to get back on. Um, that was that was wild. Oh, no, we have another driver around. That's Roundtree. So turn number four is really catching out our Grid 2 drivers tonight. So, now Simmons has finally made his pit stop. That is going to hand the lead to uh, right now. Let's see if we can't find Hallett. Hallett's just coming down the back straight now. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if he had a clear run with all the traffic. While well, Simmons currently, uh, currently sitting uh, stationary in the pits. He's just coming out. That is a great stop from Simmons. So Simmons has got a massive advantage over Hallett. Not really sure how he's managed that, but um, he's uh, he's done a really good job to uh, have a massive, massive advantage over Hallett. They were nose to tail when they came when Hallett came into the pits. So maybe some traffic has uh, hampered Hallett, and uh, or Simmons has just managed to just pick his way through. Uh, Nicely, oh, a little bit of a nudge there on Max Maxkowski, Maxkowiak, sorry. And also, thank you very much to Luke Rosella55 for the uh, for the follow as well. Much appreciated, uh, gents. So now we have some more pits uh, uh, cycling through. Now it's starting to get interesting. We've passed that halfway point in this race where we're sure that uh, our tyres and fuel are going to make it. So, I don't, don't know, unless uh, Ride has taken... Oh no, Cooley's off the track again. So, maybe the tyres are done on that Nissan. Currently watching Wright at the moment. He has actually, uh, actually managed to split uh, Hallett and Simmons. Now, I don't know if he's actually made his pit stop or not, though. So now we're starting to see a few drivers into the pit lane. Again, so Wu is now into the pit lane. So he'll drop down the order. As the field's starting to sort itself out with the pit stops, we should see uh, Simmons out in front of uh, of Wright. So if I can just bring up that stream lapse quickly. I want to see that prediction again because we had one prediction. So let's see, where is it? Where is it? I've lost it. Get rid of the chat overlay for a second. There we go, so Simmons, Bell, and Wright. That was the prediction from uh, from Routus ID. So far, I was just missing Bell from that, uh, from that prediction. Unfortunately, we're not gonna see Bell make it to the podium to uh, this race due to an engine failure. He's all over the back of right now, so that makes me wonder if uh, Wright has actually made his pit stop. So we ride on board now with Hallett as he pursues the back of the Castrol Mustang. 
we're going to see a dive into turn number six. We sort of did, but uh, well, Wright's got it covered. Just see that Hallett is erring on the side of caution. He's just not trying to get right onto the rear bar. It's just uh, just playing it smart, just hoping that uh, Wright will make a mistake. And he'll be able to take an easy pass. Oh, a little bit of a tap there. So that's the second lap in a row that we've seen Hallett just outbreak himself a little bit. Only this time he made contact with the back of the Castro Mustang. So we now look at right. I wonder if there was a little bit of damage on the back of that car after that impact. This battle so far is the most exciting on the track. Probably the most important as this is uh, between third and second. Forget about Simmons, he's cleared off to the tune of seven seconds in this race. So this battle here is uh, quite enthralling. at the back of Wright's Mustang. I've just noticed something on the front of that uh, uh, 23 red car. I'm just going to quickly, uh, quickly do this because I just saw that. Oh, the tradiestteam.com.au, right? I thought that was the readiest team. thought that was a little bit weird, but uh, no, that makes more sense. But, uh, similarly, we have a battle for the last position of the top ten between French Donnelly and Franson. Franson, I uh, think that's him going up the inside. It is indeed, so he's going defensive at the moment. That's the view that uh, Franson is having to put up with in his rear vision mirror. Oh, so Franson, he's run wide. It looks like he had a little bit of mid-corner push and that's just allowed uh, the 700 of of French to get around him. So, so Franson's starting to come under a little bit of pressure here, maybe a little bit of damage. Oh, ben McKenzie's off the track as well. He's uh, done it at the hairpin. Franson, he's side by side with Donnelly. Donnelly's going to send it around the outside. It's gonna be a brave move. Can he go for the switchback? He can't get it rotated enough. So Franson holds on it for another day. It's not, obviously, it's not over yet for, for Franson. Oh, no. I just saw Hallett's name light up in red, and he has dropped four seconds off the, off of right. So that was that would have been a mistake going into the hairpin as well. So Hallett, another victim of the hairpin. We're going to check back with this battle here. So same as before. Donnelly up the outside. Can he get it done? Oh, we got smoke signals. Oh, there's a bit of contact. Franson's outbraked himself slightly, and that's going to hand Donnelly the last position in the top 10. But can Franson fight back? He'll definitely have the run down the straight, plus the slipstream. And 
And he's going to go for it. Oh, Donnelly saw him coming. Tried to give him a bit of space, but uh, unfortunately, Franson just locked the front brake. And around he goes. So Franson will drop out of the top 10. Hugely disappointing for him. He was uh, driving really well, sitting nice and comfortably. But, uh, well, he had to go for the send. And I certainly don't blame him. But, uh, yeah, locking that front brake, he didn't really have much of a chance. But, uh, well, Donnelly did the best he could to try and avoid contact. Yeah, just, uh, unfortunately, it just wasn't meant to be. Oh, look at that, Lucado. was just swapping to this battle here because we have Mackenzie and French in uh, close quarters co uh, close quarters with each other. And we just saw Lucado just absolutely send himself off the track. Now, Benny Mackenzie is under pressure. Left the inside line well, well, well wide. But, uh, Mackenzie, Mackenzie, very smart. Sticks to his line. Great exchange going on here. And, uh, McIntosh, he's actually up to third position, so we've, something happened to Wright, I wonder if he, uh, he got tangled in a little bit of lap traffic, but either way, Wright is now fighting for the podium with his, uh, well, with the skin of his teeth, really. Macintosh under maximum pressure from Hallett. Oh, V Power 1 2, it's on the cards, Jack. But Hallett is looking very racy at the moment. Oh, that's a long way back to send it, but he's going to try it anyway. Oh, he's locked it up. Trying to. Uh, Pull it up. He's managed to do it all. Lap traffic in the way as well. Luckily, that didn't balk McIntosh. But they still got more lap traffic up ahead. And also waiting in the wings just to pick up the pieces if this goes all wrong is right. Hello to you too, Deadlock. Hope you're enjoying the stream so far. Don't go away after this race. We're going to be swapping over to the Grid 1 uh, server uh, in time for their qualifying. And thank you very much for the follow, Deadlock. Much appreciated. Make sure you hit the notification bell as well, just so you know when we are going live. That way you don't miss a single minute of the action. Now ride back on board with McIntosh. Hallett looking very racy in the Mustang. He runs it in a bit deep and off the track he goes. That's just going to hand the position to Wright. And this might give uh, Wu a bit of a chance to close the gap and... Get involved in the battle. Uh, right now for McIntosh, he's just uh, he's just sort of rallied a bit of speed just to keep uh, right at bay.
this battle just uh Oh, Connor Bell. How'd you get it? How did I get at least 10 minutes of repairs, mate? Didn't you? Didn't you do an engine? No. Okay. Interesting. So maybe run us through what happened, uh, Connor. Uh, that's very easy. That's uh, I'm sorry, not easy. Interesting. Um, yeah, unfortunately, glitches like that happen. Can <laughs> you commit engine die? <laughs> oh, good stuff. Oh, that's another car around. I heard it, and that's Wingard. So, well. So I think we need to start a counter of how many people are getting caught out by turn number four. So uh, starting from now, let's uh, let's do a bit of a count, okay? How's that sound, chat? Too high. Action just ahead of these guys. This is uh, this is what McIntosh is going to have to pick through. With uh, less than 10 laps to go in this race, and that should go by pretty quickly for Paul McIntosh. Although he'll be wishing that the checkered flag uh, that checkered flag would fly this lap. His right is starting to come back at him, and there's a massive amount of uh, massive amount of traffic in front of him. Oh, McIntosh makes a mistake, and we got Roundtree into the gravel trap, so there we go. That is two. Let's, uh, let's, start, the, let's start the count right there, so we got two. Keep an eye on the timing tower just in case someone else uh, bins it in there. Interesting battle just starting to grow here. We got Licciardo. He's uh, currently defending from Donnelly, and Donnelly's been the man on the move over the last couple of laps. In fact, this whole race he's uh, really been showing that he has a lot of pace to run at the front. He is now pressuring the back of Licciardo this time. In fact, Licciardo's made that very easy for Donnelly, so not sure what's going on there. I thought I was sort of expecting Licciardo to battle a little bit harder than that. Some great words of wisdom there from Jack Meredith. Long season, got to keep pushing it. It'll hit everyone at some point. That's exactly true. Just, just cannot give up in a championship. Anything can happen to your opponents. As we're starting to get to the bottom end of this race, Simmons still leads. He's got a massive gap over his teammate in McIntosh. Uh, as we uh, focus on our race lead, and for now. 
Oh, we got two cars off at the at the hairpin. Thought I saw someone else. I think that was three. So we'll, we'll get that count up there. Update it to three. There we go. One man who certainly hasn't put it into the gravel trap at turn number four is this guy here, Turk Simmons. As he makes his way around to tick off yet another lap. The car is just working so perfectly for, uh, for Simmons. If we jump on board. I'm sure we won't see much uh, crazy wheel action from uh, from Simmons. It's nice and smooth. One action, in and out. Absolutely perfect. But, uh, the battle isn't over. Oh no, is that another one? That's uh, Licciardo. He's binned it at turn number four. Sure, that is number four there. So we're going to keep uh, we're going to keep this count going. Make sure if you're in chat, you, uh, you keep the, the count updated as well. Just a little bit of uh, engagement for you guys. Be a part of the interactive uh, media that we call live streaming. That's another one off the track. Don't know who that was. I want to say it was. Uh, I wasn't Twit. Uh, it was Hughes, so Hughes has dropped it. No, no, we're only counting uh, drivers who've been at a turn four. It's been a uh, really s story of the night as uh, Hughes. Really struggling to get the car back onto the track and facing the right direction, so he's going to have to wait. Look at that up ahead. Well, we're getting set to uh, wrap up this race. The sun is uh, just setting ever so slowly. Oh, we got one around. That is, that's Woo. Oh, Wu out of a top five position. He looks like he just got tangled up with some, uh, possibly with some lap cars because he hasn't lost any positions. So that'll be a huge disaster for Wu. Another driver doing a fantastic job making his way through the field. set to take our leader home, Turk Simmons. He's done an absolutely terrific job tonight. Of course, we still have race number two, but unfortunately, we will not be bringing you that one tonight. We will have to swap over to our grid one server. Simmons rounds turn number six and turn number seven for the penultimate time and now begins the last lap makes his way down the front straight for the last time tonight the last time for this race at least
as here comes Turk Simmons. A great drive from Simmons. It's led from start to finish. And he has certainly sent it today. Simmons rounds the final two corners for the last time in race number one. And he will take the win. Susan swaps cameras, there we go. The Turk Simmons is your winner. It's going to be daylight and then his teammate McIntosh will come around the final corner and take out a V-Power 1-2. So a brilliant drive from McIntosh and a brilliant ride, drive from Wright. Hallett to finish fourth. And then we have Wu who will be, uh, will be happy with a lonely, lonely fifth position, I think. So we're going to quickly swap over to our driver. There we go. Look at this. Oh, that is perfect. Now that, I don't care what you say, that is teamwork and a half. Someone had better be had better be uh, clipping this. Look at that. All right, well we're going to swap back to the pits and bring you the results from race number one as we see someone chucking a donut in front of our camera. So Simmons and McIntosh make the V-Power 1-2. Then we have Wright, Hallett and Wu rounding out the top five. Then French, Licciardo, Donnelly, uh, Mackenzie, Franson rounding out the top ten. Then Bretherton, Roundtree, Williams, Mac, uh, Max Gowiak, Van Wingard, Twit, Lees, Hubbard, Hughes, and Cooley, the last of the top 20. Then we have Shadlow, uh, Bell, Andrew, Rosella, and Cal. All I believe DNFs from this race. So we're going to quickly jump out of... Yeah, quickly jump out of this server and move on to uh, the Grid 1 server. Just bear with us as we, there we go. I will be just about ready to jump into qualifying if I'm not mistaken. So drive of the race, um, geez, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to go with uh, giving that one to Simmons. Uh, that's just, it was just a fantastic drive from him. Absolutely flawless. Um, and for once, the commentator's curse did not strike. So that is absolutely fantastic. But uh, I'd like to hear everyone else's thoughts in the chat of who you think should be a driver of the race for grid number two. As we get set to... Bring you grid number one. So. So here we go. We are set to go. Just give you a nice view of the circuit while we run through the championship points. So here we go. So out in front, it is uh, Chris Munro ahead of David Thornton, Reed Cortem Cotter, Scarcella, Matt Munro, Hum, Gutterson, Dowd, Cycluna, and Hill. That is our top 12. As you can see, the points are pretty tight around the top. Uh, the top five separated by just over a hundred points. Then over the page we've got Nichols, Keane, Ferguson, Richards, Rath, Poole, Susanna, Nipris, 
Keep an eye on him, that's my brother. Been helping him as much as I could. That's a lie, I haven't. Courtier, Delaney, Webster, and Strinsos. That is our grid one point score at the moment. So, I'm gonna quickly just bring up this little overlay that we have. some of our quicker drivers. So we have Matt Cotter here. The torpedo, as he torpedoes it into turn number four. So this is, these are really some of the best drivers in AK racing. So almost the absolute best that we can find for uh, for the EV8 supercar series, as our drivers will be getting set for their uh, their drivers briefing very very soon. So just get a uh, just get a notification that my uh, brother's live stream has started. So a little bit of a plug for him. Since he is my brother, if you want to see some, some pretty good driving, head over to twitch.tv forward slash cars r61. In fact, uh, chuck, up some, uh, chuck up some live stream links in the chat as well, everyone. If you know someone in this field that is live streaming. And of course, here's our, here's our uh, reserve driver. He made an appearance at Albert Park, and that's Caldwell. So great to see that Caldwell is back again. So, have a look around, see if we've got anyone of note. Hasn't set a time just yet. Well, Andrew Hill, well, and sorry, Hill has not uh, set a time by the looks of things. Give you a link, Notorious. I will give you a link right now, mate. So, actually, I probably shouldn't be doing this. So, I think that's a that's a little bit of a conflict of interest. Um, but uh, yeah, if you go on to, in fact, in fact, I don't want to send you a link right now because then you'll leave that leave this uh, live stream. <laughs> no, that's okay. I'll, I'll I'll put up a. Yeah, I'll, I'll DM you, mate. If I can, there we go. Can. I uh, don't think I can. I'm not good enough. Not good enough to send you a message. But, uh, yeah, if you look up Kaiser61 on Twitch, you'll be able to find him. So uh, there he is there in the number 61 Commodore. So hopefully, hopefully it does a little bit better. Not looking good so far. He's down in last. Uh, well, practice doesn't really mean much these days. But, uh, there is, there is one of the best liveries on the field at the moment. That is the Australia Post Send It Racing car. So as our drivers are now in uh, in their drivers briefing. So as you can see, we've got a couple of witness marks here at turn number one. We saw this a few times in uh, Grid 2 just then. Uh, a couple of drivers grabbing the front brake and going straight on over onto this uh, gravel here. So, definitely something to keep an eye on. I was, very, I was pleasantly surprised in Grid 2 that we didn't have more carnage uh, going into Turn 1. So, that's, uh, that's great to see.
Oh, Flubber with the subscription. Thank you very much, mate. Three months. Much appreciated, mate. Uh, if you're liking what I'm doing so far here on Go Race Promotions, uh, send us a subscription. Or at least a follow. That'd be nice. So as we're going to have a quick look around at uh, some of our drivers on track, we'll quickly focus on Chris just to give him a little bit of a little bit of crap. See if he can actually hit an apex this time. <laughs> he'll watch back the stream and he'll hate this. So as he brings it into turn number six. with him for now. That's an improvement from uh, from Chris, that's good. He's now within two seconds of uh, Thornton's time. Now oh, there you go, 51. Jeez, oh, that is quick and oh, Hill's having trouble getting into the server now. That's uh, That's not good. So Chris keeps it in second, which is interesting. So, but one thing that uh, honestly we've I've been talking with Chris about, uh, he, he is a lot more happier with how he's learning the car and uh, how it's working for him, and uh, certainly getting a lot more comfortable and a lot more competitive as well. I would say. Uh, with the V8 supercar, as he makes another improvement, brings him a little bit closer to the to the front. Uh, still, obviously, for everyone, they got a long way to go to try and catch uh, try and catch Thornton. So unfortunately, now Cyclone is having trouble uh, getting into the server. Hopefully, hopefully a lot of our drivers will uh, will be able to join. Oh no, drivers getting kicked from the server. That's not good. I'd say we're going to have a little bit of a delay while our while our couple of drivers uh, try and sort out their issues and they can join the server. Have a quick look around the field. So Ferguson, who's right behind Chris at the moment. Oof, it's a big wheel spin moment. Interesting line through turn number turn number five there, just grabbing a little bit of dirt. Uh, I'd say we're about ready to try and get this qualifying session underway. So have a look at uh, Vanderhum here. Now Hum, one driver who has been racing in our Super GT League. Uh, in the GT 500s, he had a big struggle at uh, at Highlands uh, about two weeks ago. 
So hopefully he'll be uh, he'll be ready to go racing next time by, which is actually this coming Thursday at uh, Yas Mariner. Runs around in the in the Honda in GT500. Currently, Hum sitting in the top 10 comfortably. Still a little bit off of, uh, well, it was, uh, ah, oh jeez. I don't remember who it was now, it was, at, it was at the top. Oh, I can actually, I can actually do it this way. That's right, it was Thornton. Showing Thornton down in, uh, 12th. Which is interesting. So, so we're getting close to a start. We'll have a look at uh, Kane, another one of the SLM. Is that SLM or STM? No, SLM uh, Commodores. We saw a couple of these in uh, uh, Grid 2 just then. And uh, they are pretty well presented cars, I have to say. Something about uh, black and green that just goes so well. Okay, so it is go time for qualifying. Let's uh, bring up our Sarah Carcel so we can pick someone who's on track nice and early. And that is, of course, who else but Matt Cotter. And he is going to take us for a good lap around this circuit. As Ruka joining the, joining the chat. How you going, mate? Uh, Nipris. Well, we've only just started qualifying. He was uh, about 1.2 seconds off the pace of uh, Thornton, so not bad for, for Nipris. Starting to make uh, slow improvements, I think. As you see Cotter right on the edge of, um, of uh, grip there. This is looking like a very strong lap for Matt Cotter. He's of course going to set the benchmark time. Behind him is uh, Chris Munro. That first to set time will be Matt Cotter at 52.5. I uh, don't expect that to stay up there for long, but caught him reading Munro. They can't go quicker. Matt Munro goes into fifth. Now Ferguson splits the two Munros. So the time's starting to come in early. Rough. Now 53-4. They'll put him on sixth position. Dowd into fifth. Then Scarcello to seventh. So Jesus is uh, really firing in quick. Caldwell into the top ten.
just waiting for the rest of the field to cycle through and get their lap times in. Ferguson off the track, pull into 11th position. And uh, Cotter's about to set his second flying lap. That's a good one too, a 52-1. Can Cortem respond? No. Yes, Cortem can. Chris Munro responds as well. Reed can't improve. Matt Munro back up into the top five. And we have Rath into the top six now. So Rath just on the edge of a 52. But he gets uh, displaced immediately by Dowd and Scarcella. Cowdwell up into eighth. Thornton into seventh now. So David Thornton currently sitting seventh. And that uh, wonderful looking Repsol uh, Holden Commodore. Oh, we have another one off into the... Off into the weeds as Thornton is off to Neverland. Or are we off to Neverland? I think I think we just lost our connection. Just uh just bear with us folks. having some technical difficulties.
So it looks like we are back in action. Not really sure what was going on, but... Um, uh, we do seem to be back in action. And, uh, we have 10 minutes left of this uh, qualifying session for Grid 1. So... Well, expect this to be a quick fire qualifying session now that everyone's back into it. Oh, Cotter very deep into turn number six. That's going to cost him a little bit. But, uh, well, we've got the two Munro brothers. They are nose to tail at the moment. Of course, uh, love going on board with this one. Get it winning it, you can get it binning it. Uh, Matt Munro. No, unfortunately, we can't see it because uh, they both transported back to the pits. Oh, no. Okay. It's, uh, that's not good. So, yep, we're still having some technical difficulties. Just uh, bear with us again, folks.
So it looks like, uh, well, we're up for take three, I think it is. There's our server. Well, the server is going to be uh, slowly populated as drivers uh, make their way back into the server. Look at that. Look at that. T Half a T-pose. Look at that. That's excellent. While we're waiting, we're just going to have a quick poke around the uh, garages. So, uh, yeah. That looks pretty cool. Yeah, still on garage doors, you know. What was that? Ah, oh, jeez. Pressed the wrong button. What I do like is how you... Uh, what the hell? Did we just lose... Ah, uh, we just lost connection again. Alright then. Uh, we'll be right back again.
So just bear with us, ladies and gentlemen. We are just moving servers. Uh, we do believe that the server was the issue, so we're just uh, changing server addresses. Hopefully, we'll be back in action in just a short while. Thank you for bearing with us. Hi, right, Benny. Yeah, we're just waiting for the server to come back online, mate. Yeah, Mogsy, uh, just a couple of server issues. Uh, not really sure what's going on, but uh, yeah, it is what it is. We'll be uh, back online and streaming as soon as we can.
So we're not too far away from uh, getting this server back online. Uh, thank you very much for remaining patient with us. And thank you very much to Mogzy88 for the follow, mate. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, uh, server, server issues are a problem. They are a reality in sim racing. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, looks like... Uh, server is up again. We'll quickly join and find out. Okay, so I think we are back in business. We certainly are in a server. We certainly have a, a few cars running around the circuit. Currently focusing on Delaney. Uh, I'm sure that we will be... We'll be uh, s jumping straight to qualifying in the next few minutes. Uh, thank you very much for remaining patient with us. Uh, but we are back in action, which is uh, fantastic to see. And big ups to the uh, to the team at AK Racing for getting this back online so quickly. Of course, we will have to touch wood at least. As we, oh, there we go! Oh, oh doubt that was. Uh, if you're watching the stream back, that was uh, that was amazing. Like Cluna, okay. I'll have to have a quick look at that. Pipe King, uh, a pretty nice looking car, I have to say, uh, Vanderhum. Thank you to uh, Polish Club for, uh, for jumping on board with Cycluna. So, have a quick look around the field. Oh, big lockup from Strinsos. So, that'll be a nice flat spotted pair of tyres right there. It's actually interesting to see if we if we just jump back to to turn number four, we see we're going to see some very different racing lines. Some drivers will prefer a low line, other drivers will go up high and use the banking, such as uh, Chris Munro there. Try and get the drive out of the corner. So here we go, we've got one driver popping into view there. That, what are we up to? Uh, seven? Seven in the count? So as you can see, a lot of drivers just doing things uh, differently. I think we're up to seven in the count. Oh no, only up to five. There you go. So there we go, five bins at turn number four. And uh, did, did we just? No, we didn't. 
Okay, so we're into qualifying now. Let's see if we can't find. Yeah, we go. Now we can get through the stir carcel. So take two for the qualifying of round number three of the EV8 super, supercar series. Grid number one as the torpedo sends it around turn number four. Just avoiding becoming number six. So we'll wait and see what these guys can get down to now that uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure a couple of them will be feeling a little bit cold. Haven't been able to do much. Haven't been able to keep fresh and cut some laps in that massive break that we just had. But, uh, we'll Cotter runs it right out to the fence, almost uh, touching the touching the Armco actually, as he sends it into turn number four. And just to pull it up, oh, big brake lock up. It's going to hurt him. Gets really good drive out of the out of the hairpin though. Oh, Matt Connor running it onto the grass there. Might, wouldn't have helped the tyres, but we're going to see the first benchmark time for take two of this uh, qualifying session. So we now see what time Connor gets down to a 52.7, a strong start. But Cordham almost gets him with a 52.8. Then we have uh, Reed, Chris Munro, Delaney, Thornton, then Ferguson, Rath. Times are coming in pretty quickly now. Fortunately, Cotter has binned it at turn number one. Reed now up into fourth. Then we have Keane into tenth. Some great times put in already. Nipris into twelfth. Susanna, 14th. Uh, I think that was Hill, Cycluna now. So. Top 10 times starting to fall pretty quickly. That's tight between first and eighth position as well. Four tenths, well, less than half a second covering the uh, the top the top eight. As we see, Cordham here eclipses uh, Cotter that Munro eclipses him in straight away. Reed Delaney. Thornton now to the top with a 52-1. We saw Thornton get into the 51s during practice earlier tonight. Nichols into 15th. Dow manages to move up into 6th position. Then we have Scarcella. He just manages to sneak into the top 10 as well. Susanna now up into 9th. And he's dragging along Chris Nipris with him. Now, oh, actually, that was Cycluna there. So I've got it mixed up with someone else. Scarcella, that's who I thought it was. Right. Let's see, David Thornton. Currently sitting at the top of the leaderboard in the VF Commodore. As Chris Munro eclipses Thornton. Delaney into the second now. Thornton unable to improve. So some quick times being put in. Delaney, he's just a whisker off the pole time, as is Thornton. Scarcella manages to get into the top ten. Oh, we got cars off the track. That's another one. Get the counter up to sixth. So there we go, six bins at turn number four. Hum now up into sixth position. Keen up into 14th. I'm doing a great job. He's just ahead of Dowd. The times are really, really tight amongst our amongst our field. Delaney moves up into the pole position. He's almost into the 51s. We're going to see a 51 by the end of this session, that's for sure. Oh, Thornton's binned it. Cotter now up into fifth. Edges himself closer to the top.
Now Coldwell, he gets up into 11th, just off the, uh, off the top 10. Matt Cotter now turns to the track, fresh set of tyres on. Reed now into third. And believe it or not, we still have 14 minutes left of this right of this session. see what Reed can do. He's just a whisker off the top time. If he keeps this up, this should be an improvement. I know he bins it in turn number six. Manages to keep it on track, but he's going to dive into pit lane to get some new tyres. Have a look at Chris Munro, see where he is. He crosses the line. It's not an improvement. Check where his brother is. Still a second off, uh, off his own personal best though. That delta's correct. We have two cars off the track. That's Richards and Susanna. Actually, I oh know they were just coming out of pit lane. Just waiting to clear some cars. Oh, Scarcella off the track now. So there we go. It's bin number seven. We haven't even gotten to the race. We're about to hit double digits. This is great stuff from our grid one drivers. The whole field separated by less than two seconds. We continue to follow Scarcella as he uh, looks to finish this lap. Oh, Chris Nippris, personal best, a 53-1. The 61 is on the move. And he moves with almost within a second of Delaney's time. He'll be happy with that. Right on board with Chris Nippris now. Now Thornton goes up to second. Again, a whisker between himself and Delaney. Nippers is going to peel into pit lane for some new tyres. Matt Cotter just behind. Oh, Dowd. I think Dowd has binned it. He has. He's binned it at turn one. Just check with Cotter. He hasn't improved. 52-2. See where Delaney is. He's, he's just tucked up behind David Thornton's Repsol Holden. Uh, Thornton comes into pit lane, so has Delaney. Oh, that was his outlap. He's got traffic ahead of him. Oh, he breaks himself a little bit, manages to pull it up. That's a lot of traffic in front of Delaney. Oh, and he gets turned into by, by a car on its outlap. That was Ferguson, I believe. It was indeed, so... I think Ferguson might have a case to answer there. Oh, 
continue to watch David Thornton as he's on his outlap as well. Oh, we got one car way off the track. Oh, that's Hum. Hum's out of the server, so thought someone was off to Neverland there. That's a disconnect if ever I've seen one. So Thornton now. Be on full attack this lap. Nice and smooth for Thornton as he tips into turn number six. And he'll stop the clock at 52.7, so that's not good enough for an improvement. Absolute limit of braking for turn number four. You see smoke signals flying everywhere. Cycluna now does a personal best. Richards does a personal best. And Susanna does a personal best now. So Thornton now improves. It gets down to a, a 50.04, just 0.012 of a second between himself and Delaney. And only a little bit further back is Chris Munro. When I say a little bit further back, I mean absolutely minuscule gap as uh, Chris Nipperis sends some massive smoke signals in front of Thornton. Matt Munro also manages to sneak into the top 10. Jump over to Chris Munro now. nine that time by for Chris Munro so the track maybe just starting to go off a little bit for these guys oh Coldwell he's binned it big time coming out of the out of the hairpin managed to find the fence but uh, Dowd just ahead of Thornton and Nipperus he's currently sitting in ninth position What time can Dowd get down to? Stops the clock. That was an outlap, unfortunately. Oh, he runs it too deep. Runs it wide. He's going to abandon that lap. So 89 back to the pit lane. Ferguson now up into 13th with a 52.7. Caldwell into the gravel trap again at turn number four. That is That makes pin number eight. We're getting there, folks. Looking at Richards, as he crossed the line, 52-7. It's good enough for 14th. Oh, wow, we got cars going around everywhere. Just in the background there, that looked like uh, Matt Munro. And Poole. I have a feeling that there was uh, maybe one driver coming out of pit lane and just didn't quite wait long enough. So maybe that Discord will be uh, 
a little bit on fire at the moment. This is a guy that I'm a little bit surprised he's so far down. That's uh, Dietmar Rath. Very good sim racer. He's another driver who races in our Super GT League here at Go Race Promotions. Currently sitting second in the championship. He had a great round at uh, Highlands Auto Circuit. Oh my goodness, that was Thornton. Well, no, that was Richard, sorry, well off the track. But, uh, let's just bring back uh, Rath. He had a great round at Highlands Motorsport Park for Super GT and he'll be back in action on Thursday night for the Yas Mariner round. It's now Cotter into the 51s. So Matt Cotter sends the number 99 into, the, into pole position for now with three minutes to go. Great lap time from Matt Cotter. Can Delaney respond? No, he can't. What about Thornton? Is he on a lap? Hard to tell. I think he might be on a lap. It doesn't look like a particularly strong lap. No, oh, that's an out lap. Chris Munro, he'll be on a hot lap. Find out. There we go. So Phil Reed, Peter Reed, sorry. Phil Reed's a drag racer. Doesn't know anything about turning left or right. Peter Reed, though, stays in fifth. How about Quantum? He goes up to second. He's into the 51s as well. Absolute whisker off of Cotter's time. Matt Munro is still not quite there. Let's see if anyone is about to complete a lap. Thornton unable to improve a 5209. So what about what about Reed? Reed is unable to improve. He stays sixth. Time is running out for these guys. We've got less than two minutes to go. It's now or not never. Still can't improve, so Reed is just stuck in sixth position right now. Got Delaney now, he's on a hot lap. He's just cooked it a little bit too far into turn number six. It's gonna cost him a lot. He'll get one more lap in though. just behind him so Rath and Nipris will be absolutely cheering at the moment because they've got a great toe in uh, Delaney and Thornton and Cotter just ahead Rath has pulled out so we're starting to see the checkered flag it's about to come out now Wait and see if anyone else can uh, top. There we go, so checkered flag is out. 
What can Delaney do? Can he upset? It doesn't look like he will. So that's the end of it. Guess we have a few more drivers. Caught him. I think he's still on a lap. He's the last man who can really take it up to Cotter. He's not, I don't think he's going to do it this lap. He's two tenths down. But no, he's not going to do it, so. See if anyone else is on a hot lap. No, that's it. So there you have it. That is the end of qualifying for race number one uh, tonight. So Matt Cotter puts it on pole position with a 51.937 and Cortum will line up beside him on row number one with a 51.966. That is how tight it is at the very top of this field. Then on row number two, we have Delaney and Thornton. And those two guys are within a tenth of what Cotter was able to do. So well done to those guys as well. Then we go back to Chris Munro and Reed on row two, uh, three, sorry. Row four, we have Cycluna and Susanna, then Dowd and Hum rounding out the top ten. Over the page, we've got Scarcella and Matt Munro, then Ferguson Richards. Caldwell round out the top 15 as the reserve driver. Keane and Hill. Uh, Hill will line up beside Rath on row number nine. Then Nichols and Nipperus will round out the top 20. And then over the page for the final entries, we have Strinsos and Poole who will line up on row number 11. And a really good performance by all the drivers uh, to be within two seconds of the leader. That is absolutely fantastic. Uh, for those of you playing along at home, who do you think is going to win this race? Let us know your predictions in the chat. I mean, for me, it's going to be pretty hard to, to go past uh, Cotter or Cortum. Uh, you never know. Let's quickly go for a fly over to our grid. The field is all lined up. Have a look at that. 11 rows of cars. They stretch around the final corner. How big this field is. So, can we get some predictions in chat? What do you reckon, guys? Who's going to bin it? And who's going to... Who's going to win it? Right. We'll quickly go for a little walk up the grid. So, oh, look at that. See, I didn't, I didn't notice this, the, the big, I was looking all over this car for <laughs> the new sponsor and it's right there, uh, splashed across the bonnet, so yeah, apparently I'm a bit of an idiot. So yeah, there you go, new sponsor for, uh, for Cycluna, and that is Polish Club, a Sydney brand. Thank you to Vanderhunt for bringing that to my attention. his teammate Van Hunt there just ahead of Scarcella and Munro and we have uh, Richards and I want to say that's Ferguson before we have another row of Commodores in Meredith no that'll be uh, Caldwell sorry and Keane and then Ruff and Hill then we have uh, 
Nicholson Nipris, uh, the brother's out there. That's good for him. He's slowly improving. He'll be happy to have qualified within a second and a half of the leaders, that's for sure. And then on the back of row of the grid, we have the Send It Motorsport car of Pool and then the Scandia car of Strinzos. Uh, let's uh, quickly fly back to the front of this field. I want to have a good pick as to who's going to who's going to win this race. Uh, personally, it's going to be between these two, I think. I think uh, if they can get through turn number one, and that's the main thing tonight, get through turn one. If you don't get through turn one, you're not going to win. And then, of course, you've got to get through turn number four pretty well. I guess pretty well. It's uh, survived the first lap. Wait till everything dies down before you start having a dig. Well, anyway, we're about to find out what what is about to happen as our lights appear up on the screen. We will start seeing them light up one by one. Here we go. So we're up to six lights on. And out we are away and racing a great strong start from Cotter and... Uh, I think that's Delaney on the front row with him. But uh, Cotter's fighting back. Oh, they're pushing and shoving each other. One car's off the track. Oh, it's all carnage up in the mid-pack. And it does look like as if everyone has managed to survive relatively intact. But it is, I think that's Delaney. Delaney out in front of Matt Cotter. And then the field is just streaking through, ever trying to just snake through one by one. We've managed to make it through relatively unscathed. Let's uh, bring you our broadcast. So we are away and racing with uh, Cotter. Cotter's actually back in front of Delaney, so I don't know where that's happened. I think uh, Delaney had a really shocking exit out of the hairpin, and Cotter's just been able to round him up with the better drive. We have a yellow flag out for some reason. Susanna has dropped down. Cotter's now just starting to ever so slowly stretch the legs of the number 99 Commodore. As they streak down the front straight towards the hairpin. Thornton just sort of thought about a sneak up the inside on Delaney. Couldn't get it done. Now more battles up and down the field. Nippers right in the thick of it as well. The field has remained really, really close up, except for Susanna, unfortunately. I think he's, uh, I think he's made a uh, pit stop as Delaney sets the fastest lap of the race. He's immediately eclipsed. No, he's not immediately eclipsed, actually. So... Cotter... Just doesn't look like as if Cotter's able to break the back of, uh, of Delaney just yet. Should we make our way into turn number four again? Is everyone going to make it through? Ooh, we got we got a battle here. Richards and Rath, they've swapped positions. Oh, we got one car around. That looks like Vanderhum. No, Cycluna and Vanderhum. So the teammates have collided. No way! Oh, that is going to be a very uncomfortable debrief, I can tell you right now. Just saw that as well. So fast lap of the race again for Delaney. A 53-0, oh, he's two tenths of a lap, but second. Sorry, two tenths of a second. Oh no, Nipris is off, he's binned it at turn number six. Oh, I was just about to say, he's done really well to go from tw 20th up to 12th. But I think he's just been caught out by some mid-pack shenanigans. Gonna be disappointed by that. It's still a long race, though. We've got Nichols and Hum as well. Oh, we got smoke signals everywhere. Battle for the lead is still on, and it's still a six-car freight train with the uh, Cordum bringing up the rear of it. Cotter fast lap the race now, first into the 52s. So 
this we have got a race on guys so they're already coming up onto lap traffic with uh, Susanna. I believe Susanna's already made his pit stop he's caught a lights up that front left tire again so he'll be turning that tire into a 50 cent piece if he's not careful We got a car off the track. Oh, Hums binned it at turn number four again. Oh no, he'll be absolutely filthy. Now Caldwell is in the wars tonight. Paddling away with just about everyone, I think. This is, a, this is not going to look good here. So we got a, what looks like a six car freight train all lined up behind Nichols at the moment. Nichols is doing everything right at the moment. Not doing anything wrong as I think that's, oh that Cyclona, he went for a bit of a late send there. I think it was uh, impromptu because he uh, grabbed the front brakes. I just noticed that on the dashboard. <laughs> oh god. I love these guys. I love how they uh, they just leave little Easter eggs for me to find in their liveries. Oh wait, what's that on the other side? Is that Ritz? I think that's Ritz. I won't be able to see it because I won't have a camera angle. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. Oh, well, well done, Cycluna. Filling my gas tank with spaghettios and hiring a mechanic to fix it. <laughs> oh, oh no. <laughs> oh, we got to get out of this one. <laughs> Makes me wonder what Hum's got on his uh, on his livery. So, uh, Matt Munro's actually fallen into the clutches of uh, these guys as well. So. So it'd be interesting to see what's actually happened. Well, one minute lap time for Scarcella and Munro. That would suggest that those two have come come together at some point. And you know what, just, just because I'm curious, I have to know. Hmm. Racing me so hard, Alex Albon. Uh, I can't make that out on the other side, unless I... Don't know if, I don't know if this will work. I, don't, I can't see it. Ah. Oh. oh, hang on. Oh, they are racing me, sir. Okay. <laughs> well, now that I got that out of my system, I can stop wondering as Matt Munro off the track. That's going to be costly for Munro. And Matt Munro not having a good time tonight in race number one. Oh, Chris Munro, has he binned it? He's, I think he's binned it at, at turn number four. So Chris Munro is our number nine bin. What a shame. He was up there with, uh, with Delaney and Cotter. Oh, what? Oh, no. Oh! Big contact there. Dowd has been absolutely nailed by Chris Munro. Not sure what happened there. Oh, and then a fairly unsafe release there, but uh, rejoin from Dowd. Uh, there's a lot of damage on that Commodore. We're not really sure what happened there. Maybe a steering failure. And there we go. So bin number 10 for Cezana. We did it, lads. We made double digits for bins at turn four.
Well, this battle here, this is uh, stretching up all the way to, uh, to Nichols, actually. So this is for the last spot in the top 10. I have no idea what happened to, to Chris Munro. It just looked like he, his car just went straight ahead and he had no control over it. Nichols continues to just hang on to P10, although he runs it very deep, very wide into the kitty litter, and he'll surrender P10. Unfortunately, the pressure just seemed to get to him. That means that now Caldwell, our, our reserve driver, he now takes the, the head of this uh, battle pack, the 10th position. As the field just starting to spread out a bit. Not bad after, after 12 laps, they've just started to spread apart now. Last person you really want behind you is one of the Munro brothers. Look back at Matt Munro. The one in the 706 Altima. As Caldwell gets a little bit of wheel spin on the apex, over rotates the car, and that'll give Matt Munro a chance around the outside towards turn number six. So Caldwell will have the preferred line. But Munro's just going to send it around the outside. He can't get it done. He's going to run a little bit wide. This will give Ferguson a chance. Ferguson gets the wheel spin. gets a little bit too excited on the accelerator and he falls back further. Well, again, Meredith. He's doing everything right. Have a look at how close Munro is this time. And he's going to send it up the inside into turn number two. Will he get it done? Well, Cole will go for the switchback. He can't do it. So Munro makes a very good pass into turn number two. A little bit of a brake lock. Now Cole, is he going to try and fire back? He does. Fires back up the inside, turn number four. Oh, they touch a little bit. That's going to open the door to Ferguson. Will he be able to capitalise? He can't. Oh, he gets massive wheel spin. So massive amounts of wheel spin for Ferguson. And this is just going to help Nichols buy back into this battle. I can almost see the frustration and the, and the smoke pouring out of Matt Munro's ears right now. He'll be absolutely frustrated, stuck behind this uh, this Caltex Commodore as they both managed to get around Hill. Hill is travelling really slowly for some reason. In fact, he's short shifting. Seems to be anything wrong with the car. Maybe he just uh, he just dropped it off the track somewhere. But the mellow yellow C Chevrolet Falcon that still triggers me. Still triggers me. 
It's going around. It's back up to race pace again. And this battle is still going on. Munro is still prying and prodding for any little gap that he can. Oh no, we have another driver off the track. That's Richard. Oh, he's dropped it at turn number four. So there we go, bin number 11. That is a lot of drivers that have been caught out by turn number four. Now Cornwall. It's going to be defending again from Munro. Munro sends it from a long way back. A few smoke signals. Oh, they're going to touch. Oh, Cornwall's off the track. Oh, I don't know. That's going to be up to the stewards, I think. I wouldn't want to be calling that one. Oh, we got a car coming out of pit lane. I think that might have been Hum. It's just, uh, he's really helped Matt Munro out because he's really sort of held up uh, Scarcella. We have another car off the track. It's Nichols. He's dropped it at turn four. Oh, Munro, he's dropped it. He went for a big send and he's absolutely dropped it off the track. He's going to drop behind Hill. Cyclunas in pit lane. front is uh, Matt Cotter. The torpedo is absolutely gone. He's into lap traffic now. Oh, Matt Munro's into the... Oh, no. We have more drivers off the track at turn number four. That's got to be... Oh, how are we going to do this? Bin 12 and bin 13. <laughs> And all this is done. I'm really happy to say this. But we're not at half race distance. But what it's done, it's helped this guy go from 20th up to 10th. So Chris Nipris, well, that's a huge, huge uh, gain for him. 10 positions in, uh, in 20 laps, even after a bin as well at turn number six. So... Chris Nipris has really benefited from uh, all the shenanigans that have been going on in, in this race. Now we still have pit windows, no, pit stops to make as well. Uh, let's have a look at this. Oh, this is, this snarling pack is going to come unstuck big time. So Cyclona up the inside of Matt Munro. Munro's going to give him a little nudge. Munro, he's able to get the drive out of the final corner into turn number one and two. And he's able to just get the move done. Oh, they're still side by side. They're rubbing wheels. What great racing. They're going to give each other room anyway. Great sportsmanship from Cycluna and Matt Munro, but Munro is going to hold the position. Cycluna is going to quickly swap to the inside, and he's going to send it up the inside. Can he get the move done? He can indeed. Great battling between Cycluna and Matt Munro. And just behind, we got Ferguson and uh, Strinsos. So we're looking at the back of Ferguson's Falcon. The Mustang's coming. Will he send it? He will. Big dive up the inside, but he's wound way, way, way off the track. Oh, Strinsos, I hope you got your, your uh, paddock pass because you're going to need that to get back onto the track. 
And he'll find his way back onto the track now. Guy, he's going to be filthy with that. Scarcello now, he's under, he's under pressure now from the reserve driver of Caldwell. Garcella runs a little bit wide. Oh, he manages just, just hang on to it. But that's going to give uh, Corval a chance. We look at the back of Scarcella. Scarcella's going to go defensive. He's going to make uh, Corval go the long way around. We're going to see for a switch back from Corval. Can't quite get it done this time. Got the slipstream, he's not sure what to do though. Are we gonna see a send? He has a think about it, he's just showing the front of the car in the mirrors. Just to try and get in the head of Scarcella. Just see that the drive that Corwell gets oh, as he slides the car through turn number three. Oh, we got a car off the track as well as that hill. Hill's dropped it, coming out of turn number four. And meanwhile, this battle is still going on between Corbel and Scarcella, so we'll keep an eye on this battle. Doesn't seem to be much that uh, Corwell can do uh, about the Mustang of Scarcello. It's just enough acceleration from the Mustang just to keep him clear of the drive that uh, Corwell has through some of this tighter stuff. I'll actually jump on board with Corwell for a lap. We'll just see where Corwell appears to be weaker than, uh, than Scarcella. Just see now that. Perhaps uh, Corbel has been driving the car a little bit too hard on the outside rear tyre and he's just struggling for traction. We also see a bit of a battle brewing just behind. We've got Nipris holding off Cycluna and Hill. So this is going to be a very interesting battle. Jump on board with Cycluna. Nipris is going to... Won't go defensive. Cycluna thinks about a move up the inside. Nipris gives him plenty of space. Oh, there's bumping in the background between Hill and Nipris. Just a bit of miscommunication as to where each other was on the track. And Hill will make the move on Nipris again. We're right on board with Nipris. He's going to go the long way around into turn number six. Oh, they bumped! And Nipris into the fence hard. He's going to be a little bit unhappy with that, I think. That'll be up to the stewards again. So the stewards are already going to have a very busy night. This will be absolutely painful. I think Nipris will be going straight to pit lane. Indeed he will. Why not? We're at half race distance. So get the mandatory pit stop out of the way. Get the repairs done.
And I just realised something because I was focusing on, on Nipris. He's, he's going to blame me for that. He's going to absolutely blame me for that. Anyway, Hill and Ruff now their nose to tail. And they got uh, the leader, Matt Cotter, right behind them. Now Poole just pulling out in front of them. This will be hurting Cotter big time. Oh no, Hill into the fence. And that'll be damage and time lost. He just saw the rear of the car get away from Hill. Very easy to do in these cars. Now Delaney is into the lap traffic. Actually, that's uh, Delaney Reed is just behind, so they've managed to cap make huge gains on Matt Cotter while he's been stuck in this traffic. It's pulled now, not really positioning the car ideally for, for Delaney. In fact, Delaney's had enough. He's going into pit lane. So is Peter Reed, and so is Hill. Nichols off the track. He makes 14. <laughs> All right, guys in charge, you've got to help me out with the, with the count here. I'm going to leave it up to you from now on. We've got another car. There we go. So there we go. 15. Come on, chat. 15. Oh, no. Car's getting bumped around left, right and centre. Doubt he's, he's a victim of it. Just trying to find another battle. So here we go. We got Susanna and Nipris again. Oh, Nipris runs it wide into turn four. Gets the drive off the on the exit though. He's got Susanna just behind him in the Mustang. has made his mandatory pit stop. I don't know if... No, Susanna has made his mandatory pit stop, I would say. So he will be on absolutely old tyres, whereas Nipris is on fresh tyres. See Nipris grabbing the front brakes on the entry to turn number four. Cezanne has got a good run this time. Oh no! Cotter and Delaney, have they both gone off? They've both gone off! Oh no, huge disappointment for Cotter. I don't know if they touched. I don't know if Cotter spun because of Delaney. But either way, that leaves this man in front, Peter Reed. And also Cordiman is elevated up to second position. Question will be, can Matt Cotter fight back? Patient Pete there from Matt Seven. Yeah, that's a pretty good, uh, pretty good assessment of what's going on. Just got a little bit to go in this race.
I can tell you right now as well, we've got a battle going on here for seventh position between Keane and Scarcella. Also between Wrath and Harm, they're side by side going up into turn number six. Are they going to give each other room? They are indeed. Hum will get the move done, but Wrath will go for the switch back. These two race each other in Super GT, and, well, Hum has managed to make the move stick, and Thornton will be able to pick his way through these guys as well. Picking up uh, David Thornton here. Well, the Keen suck. Scarcella battle that's still going on as well. We'll quickly swap over to Keen and Scarcella's battle as Peter Reed now sets the fast lap of the race at 52 6. and Ferguson are also getting close as well. We'll definitely keep an eye on that. As Keane's actually starting to pull away. So here we go. We've got the battle for 13th now. Nichols versus Ferguson. See the headlights are blazed from Ferguson and Nichols drops it off the track now. Pressure got there. Oh no. That's the wrong button. There we go. Back with our leader, Peter Reed. Got many battles on track at the moment. Once again, the closest battle on track. Well, Keane, Scarcella's sort of fighting back on Keane. But, uh, we, well, we just missed a move there. So, Susanna now up, up to 15th. Manages to displace Nipporus. Nipporus is fighting back again, though. Will he send it up the inside? He looks there. He has to pull out of it. Sensible driving from these two. And we've got cars coming out of pit lane as well, just in front of these guys. Oh, Nichols has dropped it again. That's 16. So 16 pins at turn number four. That's only since we started counting them. <laughs> and Nichols now falls behind Nipris again. Battle is on. Hum and Wrath. They're into it again. Right on board with Dietmar Wrath. As on, Nichols has dropped it again.
Oh, arm drops it now at turn number four. That elevates Rath back up to 11th. Arm will be a little bit frustrated with that, none, I'm sure. Oh, Nipris has actually gotten in front of Susanna again. Susanna and Nipris have now become a little bit inseparable, I think. Back of the number 61. As Chris Munro sets the fast lap of the race at 52.3. Fortunately, Munro having that massive stack at turn number six. Oh, there goes Susanna off into the grass. Just saw him grab that front right wheel over the crest. Wrath versus Hum. We've got 15 laps left to run in this race. It's just been great racing all night, all race long by uh, by every single one of our uh, Grid One drivers. Really showing exactly why they are Grid One. It has to be said. Oh, who's that? That's Pool. Pool well off the track. I think he, uh, I think he may have sent it, sent it a little bit too hard. He's gonna really struggle to get that car back onto the track. Who's that? Matt Munro, he's dropped it at turn number four as well. And I think he's picked up a fair bit of damage. He's uh, certainly being passed like he's standing still by uh, Thornton. Well, uh, he's under blue flag. Oh, Benny Mack! Podium! Well done, Ben! Well done to Benny Mack, a uh, podium finally for him. Oh no, Thornton's off the track now. That's, uh, that's bin number 17. Come on, chat, you, you gotta help me out here with the, with the count. You gotta help me out with the count here. So Thornton has uh, lost a lot of time. He's fallen back behind Delaney. He's uh, already fighting back, though. Ooh, that was close. So Delaney grabs a break as well into turn number two. They make their way down the hill again towards... Uh, Towards turn number four, Thornton thinks about it. He backs out of it. Oh! I think he, uh, think he tried to second guess his braking. Braking nightmare as always. Yep. Eighteen ops. Thank you, Ben. Glad someone's helping me out. Oh, look at the brake discs on the number 16. That is, uh, I don't think I've, was that the brake discs or was that, uh, was that just the rims? 
No, it's the brake discs. I don't think I've ever seen them glow that bright. Interesting. Now, Hum and Ferguson are starting to get pretty close here as well. Ferguson in the Falcon versus uh, the, oh no, Rath around wide at turn four. It's a Holden thing, all right. Catching back up to, to Rath now, and he's dragging Ferguson with him. We just got under 10 laps left to run in this race. Starting to get very interesting. We're just saying that uh, Rath is a little bit stronger in the back section of the circuit, I think. But uh, Hum is just able to pull him in just in this half of the circuit. Where we have the more longer radius corners, as oh, Richard's a little bit late on the decision there to let Hum through. Not much he could do about it. Chris Munro. Unfortunately for Chris, he, uh, he had a massive off. Uh, still not sure what actually happened uh, for Chris Munro. He uh, came through turn number five and the car just went straight ahead. He had all the brakes locked up, trying to avoid a collision and in the end he uh, just went spearing into the side of uh, Dowd. And that's why you see Chris Munro and Dowd uh, so far down the order. for Matt Munro, he's uh, doing quite well. Having a very lonely race, unfortunately. It uh, does look as though he's just slowly starting to catch Sakluna in eighth position. Oh, he's not gonna catch him like that. I'd say the tires on the uh, 706 Altima have had enough. Oh no, Nipris has dropped it at turn four. Oh, he's out of the family now. Just get out of the family. That, uh, that's cost him 14th position. There you go, 19. Conveniently, that is, uh, that is 61 upside down. He'll be happy about that. And thank you very much at seven. Now the battle for first is actually starting to kick off here. We've got six laps left to run. And, well, Peter Reid Yeah, we're only counting uh, bins at turn four uh, at seven. Because everyone seems to bin it there. So we're looking at the back of Reed's Commodore at the front of Del Cortum's uh, Mustang. As Susanna just manages to get out of the way.
Now, Cordoba is catching Reed now, even with the interference, uh, slight interference, I should say, from the lap traffic. Cordum is able to close up onto the back of Reed, so well, it's all on for the end of this race. Uh, Giovanazzo 3 GS Motorsport, thank you for the follow. Make sure you hit that uh, notification bell as well so you know when we're streaming again. Hope, you, hope you're enjoying the, the stream. So the battle is on here. Cordum is all over the back of Reed now. Just less than half a second between these two. Just hear how gentle the has to be on the throttle to get it out of the hairpin. That time Reed was marginally faster than Cordum. Oh, Cordum so deep on the brakes. Thought he was going to send a punch. The Commodore of Reed. Save a Commodore. Still leading this race. But for how long? It's looking very vulnerable to the back, to the front, sorry, of Cordum's Mustang. And this is what we love to see a classic Holden versus Ford battle. Cordum all over the back, almost taking the top layer of paint off the back of, of Reed's Commodore. Are we going to see a send? Ah, uh, not quite. Oh, Reed grabs a break. He's under pressure. This is just going to give Cordum all the encouragement he needs. We're right on board the lowest point of this car. Now he's caught him close enough this time. Looks to go around the outside. Oh, Reed, he's sideways trying to avoid the lap car. Manages to hang on to it. How he's made that work, I have no idea. But that's down. He's getting right out of the way for this battle for the lead. So here it is, last lap time. Has Cordham done his homework? Has he got enough information on where he's stronger than Reed? We're about to find out. Reed's weaving from side to side. He's trying to break the toe. Cordham's going to send it. Oh, he's bumped him. They both managed to keep it going. But that has hurt Cordham. Coming up to the final 
passing opportunity for Cordham. I think Peter Reed's done enough. They're around the final corner now. And Peter Reed is going to take this win ahead of Cordham. Oh, great battle between these two. Well done to Peter Reed. Well done to Cordham for giving us a fantastic finish. Cotter will finish third. As we see, I think that was Hum sending it through turn number one. Delaney will come home in fourth position just ahead of David Thornton. That is, uh, that is the end of race one. Don't go away at seven. We're about to go live for race number two. Right after this is we're going to just quickly summarize race number one. So Peter Reed takes out the win for race one tonight, followed by Cortum, then Cotter, Delaney and Thornton rounding out the top five. Then we have Keynes, Garcella, Cycluna, Matt Munro and Caldwell getting a top 10 position, our reserve driver. Over the page, we've got Detmar Rath in 11th position. Then Hum, Ferguson, Susanna, and Chris Nippris manages to score a top 15. He's done the family proud. Uh, then we have Hill, Nichols, Strinsos, Paul, Richards rounding up the top 20. And then we have Dowd and Chris Munro. So here we go. That is the end of race number one. I have some offers for, so I have some people in chat offering me uh, to do some commentary. So I'm gonna take those two gentlemen up. So let me just start, start the call. Just give us a second, ladies and gentlemen. So we are back getting ready for race number two of the uh, third round of the EV8 Supercar Series from AK Racing. Joining me in the commentary box is our top two from uh, the Grid 2 race uh, that we unfortunately missed. And that is Turk Simmons and, of course, Benny McKenzie. How are you going? Yeah, good. Yeah, good, thanks. So, great race from you guys. Uh, sounded like it was a very exciting race. Yeah, well, we had to do it twice because uh, of 
server issues uh, during the, the reverse grid, so we ended up doing another quali and then uh, 35 lapper to end it off. Yeah, bit of a bit of a shame that we had those uh, server issues, but unfortunately that's uh, that's uh, one of the problems that you have with uh, sim racing, and uh, well, something similar can happen with real racing as well, as I believe we are getting set for a stars our grid populates. So quickly run through this grid. I think it's going to be a pretty clear cut case of who we all think is going to win this race. So. On the front row we have Chris Munro and Dowd. Uh, then we have Richards, Poole, uh, Sprintos, Nicholas, Nichols, sorry, uh, Hill, Nipperus, Susanna and Ferguson rounding out the top ten. Over the page we have Hum, Rath, Caldwell, our reserve driver, Matt Munro, Sakluna, Scarcella, Keane, Thornton, Delaney, Cotter, uh, and then we have Cortum and Reed. Uh, it's going to be hard to go past Chris Munro starting off the front row, isn't it? Yeah, I think he's in with uh, a pretty good chance starting all the way up there. So anyone else, that, is there anyone else up there that uh, you, you fancy? Well, I know Richards was quite fast in practice, so it is yeah. possible he could pull something out of the bag here, but obviously yeah, have he to was, see how we go. Yeah, he should be able to pull something, hopefully. Yeah, it would be nice to see uh, Richards up there uh, battling with Chris Munro. Of course, uh, anything can happen in this Turn 1. How did you guys find uh, Turn uh, 1 and 2 in uh, Grid 2? Terrifying. Yeah. Terrifying. <laughs> very, very scary. Yeah. You've got cars all bunched up around you and you're just trying to keep clean, but it's so tight. You've got nowhere to really go if someone hits you, apart from into sand trap, which yeah, most people did. Yeah, that's something that, that I haven't really covered at all in the stream, and that is just how tight the uh, the approach to turn one and two is. It, it just sort of seems to bottleneck a bit, doesn't it? Yeah, it's it's not fun when you're side by side. A lot of uh, breaks <laughs> and hoping that you've given enough space and hoping that they do the same in a turn. Yeah, uh, that, that crest, uh, certainly seen a lot of people smoking up the tyres on the brakes there. Um, what, what did you guys actually uh, do to try and counteract that? Just just gentle right foot? Yeah, a lot of just modulating it. Um, I, I was finding that it was easier just to kind of let off the brake a bit as you go over the hump and then kind of get back on it after you've gone over it. Um, it was definitely made that braking zone quite challenging, especially locking the wheel, because you don't have much room to give in terms of going wide there. It's just straight into a sand trap, so you had to be very careful there. Yeah, I mostly just did the same as Simmons, just went over the hump, released it and modulated it through the through the corner. Yeah, that, that would be very hard to be very, uh, to do very consistently as well, I suppose. But, uh, we're about to find out how our grid one drivers handle it. Uh, because we have got six lights up and they're starting to light up like the Christmas trees that we love. Six lights on. Out and away we go. And a strong start from Dad. He's actually got the he's actually got the whole shot over over Munro. So that's something I did not see happening uh, going into this race. We're gonna see if the rest of the field managed to get through. We've got Hill off the track. Oh I got a few doors being bumped together. And then one of the Caltex cars coming up pretty slowly. We're going to go into the next scary part of this circuit, and that is turn number four, where we have seen a total of 19 bins so far. Oh, they're three wide. Oh, they're still three oh, wide. Oh, that's oh. Nipris getting touched. Oh, Nicholas, Nicholas has been turned around, and Hill is into the fence. So get that counter. That, that must be 21, I reckon. That wall there. Someone the, uh, going far slow right. on the grass here. Oh, that Not looks fun. like pool. I think that's, yeah, I think that's a bit of a redress. That sort of wall that sticks out at the hair pit is not fun if you end up wide because you go into that and you've got nowhere to go. All that chaos Richards has been promoted up into your... Yeah, he's still P3. There you go, yeah. So, uh, Richards doing pretty well. Oh, Dow runs it wide through turn number one and two. That's going to give Chris Munro the run off. Munro, how close do you want to get to the Armco? Yeah, I've, I've hit that in practice, you just go firing. 
if you hit that at all, really. Big lock up by Munro too. Oh, he's just going to start skipping away, I think. He's out in front. And I uh, have to say, Dowd and Munro have managed to get a brilliant start. They've just skipped away. Oh, is that who I think it is who has binned it at turn number four? God damn it. Uh, <laughs> no family dinner for him. He's and, fallen oh, down he'll... in the Christian legacy. Yeah. <laughs> he's off the dinner table. Well, anyway, he's... Go, uh, he's to the kitty, kitty table in the corner. Yep. No, oh, not even that. Oh, he's going to surrender a position to Nichols. He did have a bit of uh, door banging with uh, Hill. He's going to try to go for the switch back into turn number seven. Is he going to do it? Oh, Nichols wanted to argue the point. He's managed to make it work. So well, there you go. These three have got to probably better start thinking about working together so they can catch the rest of the field because they just starting to skip away. Quarter Moon Reed have got a few positions off a start. To and, 14th and 15th. And Thornton and Cotter are up to 8th and 9th, so a great start from those two. And also a bit slow on this one, but thank you for to this time for sure for the follow. Much appreciated, mate. Hope you're enjoying the stream. So it's Thornton just starting to work over the back of Ferguson. Oh, big twitch. Oh. That was sketchy. Yeah, that, that's that's um, something that's happened to me. I nearly went firing off, but saved it. I was lucky. So, Thornton's actually going to go for the long way around, which he can do thanks to the banking. But he's got to get the drive and not be forced into the fence. Oh. Oh, that, was, that was tight. This will give like Cotter a good chance. Him. Yeah, Cotter's going to get a good chance. He's got the inside line on Thornton, but he probably find he'll get blocked a bit by Ferguson. And Thornton tries to send around the oh, outside, no. and off he goes. See you later. That grass up there is like ice if you end up on it. One tyre and you're gone most of the time. Yeah, it's fortunate. But, uh... Well, Cotter's actually <laughs> been the big winner out of all that. He's uh, managed to pick up two positions in one corner. But uh, Delaney's also lined up to have a go at Ferguson too. So, as Delaney gets the car rotated, fires it off the corner. Try to get that... Uh, that good run down this straight. He's in the slipstream as well. He's going to try the long way around as well. So Ber Ferguson didn't even fight that by the looks of things. Very assume he'll just be uh, letting him through because he knows he's faster. No, that's, that's not racing though. You've got to have a go. They're faster. Let them, let them find their own way around you. Go Cotter. Oh no, we got someone off the track. Is that Richards? That is Richards. Richards. Oh no, disaster. What's that? 22 bins. That corner He's has come back and joined his teammate now. Oh, there you go. Team orders. <laughs> yeah, I'd say it'd have to let Thornton by. Multi 21. Oh, sorry, wrong, wrong team. Oh, it does have Red Bull on it, so, you know, kind of counts. Yeah. But, uh, well, Richards didn't really make that hard for, for his teammate Thornton. Jeez, have a look at this battle pack up here. This is looking really nasty, and uh, I would not want to be... I would not want to be in the centre of all this, that's for sure. So, Strint size is forcing Cotter to go the long way around. Cotter... Sending some smoke signals. Oh, he's just kept it off that tyre barrier too. Very close. And that's actually going to open the door for Delaney as well. Strin 
Francis covers it. Jeez. Trinsos really seems to be struggling with the brakes a bit. Seems to be locking quite a bit. He's under a lot of pressure here. You got Delaney right up behind him, right up behind you. So uh, certainly, uh, like, uh, well, every time you look in the mirror, and that's what you see. So, uh, I think I think that would unsettle some of the strongest drivers we have in AK racing. Ooh. Oh, that was a bump. That oh no, the teammates, the Repsol teammates have taken oh, each other no. out. <laughs> oh no, that is. That's uh, 23 and 24. Oh no. There is going to be oh, some hard words in right. that voice chat, for sure. Going to be, going to be some hard words and some deep grief tonight. Yep. <laughs> Make sure there are no staplers in the, in the room. <laughs> oh, there's still... Oh, that's a big send from Thornton. If he makes that work... Which he sort of has. He has. Very risky move there. Uh, a lot to make up now as Munro, Cotter, and Susanna. I think it's still going on in the background as well between Delaney Strinsos, uh, all the way down to about almost 12th position, or even further than that. Down to 14th. We'll have to, we'll have to quickly uh, check out this little nasty battle pack here. Ferguson grabs that curb and it's just that. Uh, oh, who was that that went straight off? Scarcella. Oh. He's having a good run. Clooney seems to be a fair way off, as we this place is Richards. But um, so clean just seems to be a fair way down for, I'm guessing, his liking. Yeah, not really sure what's happened to Sakluna. Um, I'd say he's just come unstuck at turn four a couple of times. Oh, oh Richard. Richard. Oh, Richard's maybe just overdriving okay. it now. I think that's got to be one of the toughest things to do when you make a mistake like that. And, and you can see, even though you're at the early stage of the race, you just pressure yourself, I've got to make up all this time. I can't really do that, though. Yeah, the more you push, the more likely you are to make a mistake. Oh, no. Oh, That's oh. not good. Oh. They're all over the straight. Oh, oh they're no, both gone. Oh, he's gone. They're both gone. Strinsos is uh, facing the wrong way, though. He's the big loser out of all that. He's going to have to wait for all the traffic. Oh, no. Right down to the very back. From where was he, like P10-ish? He was up there. in P10. Yeah. <laughs> oh, PV'd up this track, I have no words for it. Should be bulldozed and never be spoken of again. <laughs> it's a bit harsh. It's not that bad. It's, it's <laughs> only... Really that. So it's only a nightmare for everyone. Come on. It's only bad on corners 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. The rest of it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> that leaves about 100... 100 uh, metres of tarmac. That's good. Yeah. yeah. A couple of strokes. <laughs> Another good part. Now here we go. Reed around the outside of Ferguson. Not able to do it. That's going to... No, oh, well, oh. Ferguson just pressured himself into that. Ferguson has done a monster. So, this will give Cordham a bit of a chance on Reed as well. So he's latched onto the back of the 66. There we go. Bring out the uh, windscreen of the Mustang. Interesting watching the behaviours of some of the cars. Just Reed's car doesn't seem to have the mid corner pace or the entry speed that Cordham's car has. Oh, big lock up. Big lock. And just to keep it together though. It's like that crest corner up there. Oh, 
that was very tight. Having some narrow moments, caught him. Yeah, it's very late on the brakes, and sometimes it pays off, and other times it seems to just snowplow. Oh no! Oh, oh. no! Oh! oh. <laughs> What's that? Twenty-five. I think so. I'm starting to lose count. <laughs> yeah. That's that's why I wanted chat to, to keep it up, keep it up for me, but uh, they didn't do it. Oh, look at that up ahead! Is that Thornton and Cyclona? Oh. Oh. Oh, that, that's gone. That is... That is race over. No, oh, he'll, he'll keep going for sure. Just try and salvage any sort of paint, uh, points he can. Paints. Yeah, points. <laughs> he'll go straight into the pits for sure. Get the pit stop done and out of the way. So... He is past the lap down. Map, which is about lap 12. You can get away with pitting early for an undercut after lap 12. There you go. Um, but his tyres will go red after lap 18 laps in a stint, so he will be quite slow towards the end, I would say, unless he's going to try and double stop it. Okay, I've just been corrected in chat. It's 26 bins at turn number 26. four. 26 bins at turn four. That's quite, quite a lot. Oh, no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. I think that's why he's banished. Uh no, he was in the middle of a four car battle pack, so I'd say he's just been um he's just been nudged off a bit, I think. Uh the elbows are certainly out in the mid pack. Yeah, twenty seven bins now. Uh that wasn't a turn four, it doesn't count. Oh yeah, true. Only a turn four. Cause that seems to be where everyone stuffs up. That Caltex car looked very loose, wasn't it? Oh, we just had a DNF with uh, Thornton. Oh. So. Yeah, Unfortunate it's... to see one of the faster guys do anything. Yeah, always. Always. It's, uh, it's always tough with the reverse grid races, I have to say. So, oh, Keane's coming under all sorts of pressure. So Ferguson again in the spotlight. Now, attacking Kane. Now, he definitely looks like he has the pace over Kane. Oh, here we go. Send. No. Thinks better of it. He's got a very tight line that time around. Anyway. Can't get the drive down either. Mm. There's a very specific way you have to take turn four. If you turn in too early, there's kind of like a, a bump and it throws the rear out if you hit it. So you kind of have to stay out wider oh. if you want to get the trial. There he goes, he's gone. I'll let you finish that point, uh, Simmons. Yeah, so you kind of have to stay out wider at the hairpin uh, to get that drive to avoid the bump. Because otherwise, yeah, it just throws you out. You lose all of your drive out. Oh. Let's say the rear tyres are done on Ferguson's car. I noticed it in the first race. What was that? Um, that? I think that. internet might be having a hard time. <laughs> He's de he definitely went to Narnia and back, that's for sure. And a bit of crowd surfing. Yeah. I have to it say. a Mustang. Yeah. <laughs> Good call. <laughs> I have to say, I do, I do have to give a big shout out to Tom Lauder. I don't know if he's actually in chat, but thank you for giving us uh, off to Narnia. It's uh, much appreciated. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway. So, oh, Ferguson's managed to survive. He's still in front of the two Mustangs. Yeah, Kangaroo Valley cars. Yeah. So Cyclone actually uh, now sponsored by Poland Club as well, so a fun trip before. Should see it on the bonnet eventually. Polish Club, I think it is actually. There you go. Yeah. I've no idea what it is. I imagine no, it's a no. club. I imagine it's Polish. But apparently it's in Sydney. 
have to do some Googling. <laughs> so... Definitely some good looking cars, those two kangaroo valley cars. Hmm. That... I agree, I, I liked Cyclona's livery. Hum's livery is a little bit bright, but you know. Oh, it's a good way to stand out on stream. That's true, that's true. Nothing wrong with it. So, better focus back on this battle here. So, Ferguson under attack again. Oh, geez, Hum into the fence. And, oh, good move by Cyclone around the outside. Yeah, I'd say Ferguson had that bump down the bottom again, lost all of his drive out, and Cyclone had the edge around the outside. Quite possibly. Oh, oh no, is that another bin? That looks suspiciously like a bin. <laughs> so I think we're up to 27 now. Now, Matt Munro is really on a charge as well. He's closed the gap on Dowd. He's used the uh, used the traffic to his advantage. <laughs> that interior gets me every time. <laughs> oh, actually, I better show you guys the, the Hum and Suck Lunar interiors, then you'll like them. I think I did see Hums, actually. Oh, whoa, whoa, big send. A uh, lap car, but still. Not a bad send. I'll, I'll, I'll rate that one. It's a solid 7 out of 10, I reckon. That's, that, that deserves a watch, at least. I can talk to Poole, see if he can't organise some watches. I bet I better show you the interiors of these guys because oh, it just makes me laugh. <laughs> Filling my gas tank with spaghettios and hiring a mechanic to fix it. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I, love, I love the bird. <laughs> the crow of judgment, yeah. Oh, Jesus. I think he's got a Ritz advertisement on the uh, other side of the car too. Yes, I believe he is vibing in the Ritz car. Yep. Uh, then we go to his teammate. Oh. <laughs> Racing me so hard. <laughs> the Alex Von quote. Oh, jeez. And then on the other side, it's just a little meme. Oh, well. <laughs> I do love it when uh, when, when everyone uh, hides those little memes and little surprises from me on the, on the liveries. Uh, honestly, if anyone's watching the stream back, hide more, because I love it. <laughs> Definitely. It's a good laugh when it comes up on stream, for sure. Yep. I think I think the best one so far is caught here. It's just a shame he, he hasn't raced since uh, round one. Yeah. Uh, the, the weeb car. The more you look, the worse it got. That, that helmet got me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's a pool <laughs> off the track. Um, that post is going to be a bit late, I'd say. So standard. Yeah. Yeah. Standard, standard issue. Alright, so here we go. We've got Reed and Delaney. They're side by side going through turn number five. We're almost at half race distance. So, Reed's going to force Delaney to go the long way around. It's the only way it's going to work. Has he got it done? No. Not quite. Not quite great defending from Peter Reed, though. Hold off Delaney for another lap at least. Go over the crest. Now as well. Yeah, Cordham's right on the back of them, so. Oh, Delaney. Bit loose. I'm riding on board with Cordham. These two are teammates, and the lap car's going to be on the wrong place, wrong time for Cordham. But he's still got him. What a good move there from, uh, from Cordham. Now, uh, Strintos, he'll be 
probably thinking about getting out of the throttle. There he goes. Just see the little telltale flame out of the exhaust. Now Dowd into the pit lane as well. So pit stops have started. Ferguson's also in the pit lane as well. Oh, look at the smoke signals coming from Col uh, Reed's car. I'd be surprised if he hasn't started to flat swap those tyres now. About what point do you, do you start expecting to see uh, uh, flat spots on these tyres? Definitely well, around now for me it was. Yeah, towards the lap 20, depending on how much you're locking them of course. Yeah, I could, I could visibly see them on my um, damage radar. A bright yellow at one point. So, the hairpin just kept on getting me, each lap. Luckily the second race was short, and so they didn't get too bad. That would have been absolutely horrible with the wheel. I'm so shaking your wrist off. Oh, not really. I don't have a fan attack or any, I've, I've got a Thrustmaster, so mine's, mine's just a fucking beginner level, so mine's actually not too hurting if you hit any deck or anything. Okay. Yeah, I don't think I'd, I'd like to try it with uh, my wheel. So it's bad enough in uh, ACC. When you have a spin, you get flat spots. So, I spy a little battle brewing. We got Wrath Closing it on the back of Hill in the livery that triggers me still. Oh, Hill gets a little bit of wheel spin out of the out of the hairpin, but Ruth is uh, under attack from Cyclona as well. So I like, have a feeling Cyclona is doing a two-stop. Has he already been in the pits? I'm not sure, but he was all the way down at the very start, and now he's just pulled it back. So he's had enough of that. It's, oh, it's a really well done livery, but it, but it, it, it really needed to be on a on a Holden at least. Mm. Alex Spinozzi, sim racing is that Mr. Benny? It certainly is, mate. So, for those of you who have just joined, um, oh no, Delaney, drive through for speeding. You're done goofed. Oh no, that is actually quite a difficult pit speed line. It kind of comes out of nowhere. It's just on the corner before the walls even start. So, if you we, had a, we had a it, lot of people get caught out. Yeah. But I think one of our top, one of the top drivers, um, Pallet actually ended up getting one. Mm. Uh, huge shame, but uh, that's why you practice your pit entries. Keep practicing, you keep practicing it. Not gonna lie, I, I actually didn't practice it once, but... <laughs> <laughs> I kind of just risk it for the biscuit, you know? Fair enough. Oh, uh, okay, so how, how was the Super 2 race in terms of carnage out of 10? We ended up with a safety car in the second race. Yeah, so oh, I would wow. say an 8. <laughs> a solid 8, jeez. A solid 8. Oh, God, I've got to start uh, broadcasting the second race of uh, Super 2, I reckon. The first screen definitely makes it interesting. Yeah, interesting, scary. I actually think... Yeah. The first lap, I think the track was blocked at one point. Oh, yeah, turn one. On right? the on the first lap, just on this corner that hills on, well, just, hills just gone past before because I'm looking on the other stream, which probably be looking on Discord. Um, <laughs> generally, that's. I don't know what corner it is. I think it's three. That kink before the straight. Yeah. I think uh, someone lost it, and then cars were just stopped. So it was a bit like, uh, what was it, 2017 or 
2018? I think it was 17. Yeah, they... they yeah, because Garth Pander that? was driving, yeah. 2017. That, oh, Reed, off the oh. track. Oh, no. Has he got damage on that car? He's definitely... He's not going to the pits. I thought he was going to. I thought he was too, but he's, he's kept it going. Yeah, it's Richard's off into the pit now. Oh, jeez. <laughs> when Will Davo lost the right to have children. <laughs> Rights to have children. Yeah. I think I think he means the, the means to have children. Share what? Uh, well, five point safety harness and, and an accident. Mm. Yeah. It was quite a hard hit. It was. A I was actually, I was going through real life some of his planes replays before um, before the race tonight, and I came across that, and it was a mighty shunt. Absolutely terrifying accident. Uh, absolutely brilliant that no one got seriously injured too. Uh, so here we go, Nichols and Hill and Cycluna. Where have we seen this matchup before? Hill goes wide. And well, Nichols, Nichols decides, no, nope, I'm not having any of this, I'm into the pits. Fair enough. Yeah, fair, <laughs> fair enough, he says. Oh jeez. So Hill now he's under pressure from Caldwell, who is our uh, our reserve driver. This uh, just bounces off the wall a little bit there. Gives it a smooch. Drifter, drifter wall tap. Yeah, that's it. I think he wants a bit of white paint on his car. Maybe he's not liking the green and red. Hill looks rather loose. Through that hip, though. From that angle, anyway. I wonder if it's uh, the FGX. Uh, just an FGX issue because we've noticed that uh, Ferguson is having a lot of rear end stability issues as well. It is possible, but in, in my experience in the FGX, it's one of the more stable cars. Uh, I think the, uh, the ZB is more taily than it. Oh, yeah, the ZB is taily for sure. thought about another sand oh. brakes locking up everywhere that's always a good sign so, so we make their way up towards turn number six to tick off another lap on lap 33 of 55 jeez where's the time gone oh, he is struggling mid corner like crazy, you can't get the car pulled up. Mm. It's kind of wide there, like the last three laps. The same kind of as well. And Cooper round three sixty-five. Thank you very much for the follow, mate. Make sure you hit the notification bell so you know when we're live again. We'll be live on Thursday night for round number four of the Super GT series with uh, Go Race Promotions as well. So uh, that's going to be rather exciting. Yas Mariner. It's hopefully going to be a really exciting race. Hopefully as exciting as this one, anyway. Speaking of which, I have to look up the results. Actually, I don't want to know the results. I, just, I reckon they're about finished now. The Super GTs were running at uh, Motagi. Uh, Alex Spinozzi, yep, this is race two, mate. That's why we got such a mixed up grid. The best one. The best the one. Best race. It's a bit more entertaining, the reverse grids, especially when you start, when you have a good first race. Because you um you get to go through the field and actually battle people, through the middle, not just be at the front all the time. Yeah, but I mean, oh god, it results in so much carnage. 
Again, but it's, it's a bit more fun. <laughs> yeah, you've got more, more things fun. to do. <laughs> more things to do. Give the uh, pit crew more, more damage to repair as well, I suppose. Depends who you run into, to be honest. Ah, uh, yeah, fair call. And how hard it is. Yeah. And, and if they're an admin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hit the admins. That, that's why. That's why I stay clear of Simmons. Ah, oh, uh, okay. I'm not that scary. I thought, I, I, no, thought I, just... had, I thought Simmons had targets on his car. Ah. Oh. He I should. He should put, every, he should put every, the targets every, on the car. Every once in a while, he does. Yeah. I'd like to see someone put, uh, put a target livery on. Oh, I can't say that on stream. I can't say it. I know what I want to say, but I can't say it. I can't <laughs> say it. <laughs> oh, jeez. Well, Cyclone has now fallen into the clutches of Hill again, so I don't know what's going on with Cyclone's car. He's um, He pulls away, then he uh, falls back again. I think he may be doing this with damage. Quite possibly. He would have gotten that repaired in the uh, in his pit stop, unless he got even more damage. It is possible he didn't want to waste time repairing it, you know, for as fast as oh, possible. Yeah, that's true. A huge risk though. Ooh, break lock up from Hill. Well, he keeps it on the track this time, though. That's who it was that was complaining about uh, Cyclone's livery. It was uh, Spinozzi. I knew someone didn't like it. Anyway. Yep, Spinozzi's happy. So... I guess almost everyone is happy then. Oh, anyway, Cyclone now is still under pressure from uh, Hill. Hill just doesn't seem to be able to just get that last little bit to be uh, on the back of Cyclone, though. It's strange because he's dropping two tenths to uh, Cyclone on the last lap. Oh, who was that? Was that Wrath? That was Wrath. And he came together with uh, Caldwell. Did he come together with Caldwell? Or did he switch the wall and go flying off? Oh, and he's stro oh, he's oh. touching the leader. That was Chris Munro coming through. Oh no, now we got... Uh, who's that? Is that Strinsos? No, that's not Strinsos. Uh, I'm trying to guess who it is. It's oh god, I've lost it. Scarcella? Scarcella, that's who it is. And he's trying to pick his way through the lap traffic. Actually, this is for position. Ooh. So, well, Scarcella manages to get the position done. And Wrath falls down a little bit further. See in the background, Richard's trying to get around Nymphorus as well. And, oh, I think, uh, oh, I think... Chris is gone. He's gone. He just, oh. I think he may have gotten turned around a little bit there. He's going to take the chicane. He's going to take the motorbike circuit. It's a responsible rejoin, though, I have to say. But, uh, he'll be he'll be very disappointed with this how this race has gone for him so far. He, um, uh, he had DNFs. He, uh, he had a fifteenth in race number one. So he was oh Richards has DNF'd. Wow. Okay. That disconnect. I think he may have got tangled with uh, an impress. Mm. I'd say that the Discord is probably exploding right now. Yeah, I'm. I'm not gonna look. <laughs> I'm scared to. I'm scared to alt tab. That's what I'm scared of doing. So anyway, 
Dad is coming under pressure from Reed and uh, Delaney sort of going with Reed as well. So uh, Dad will be under a lot of pressure right now. Except we can't. Yeah, there we go. That's the camera I wanted. So now Dad trying to break the slipstream for Reed. I don't really think that actually helps though. Uh, Sprintos gets out of the way, I believe. But uh, I think that's given Reed enough of a chance to get a run on uh, on Dowd down the back straight. was going to go for the send. Made up a lot of ground on that one corner. And you see the different line that Dowd takes. It gives him much better drive to return number three. Mm. That's just going to help. Oh, maybe not. So here comes Reed. Still not close enough. Although... Oh. I think Dowd went wide. Yep. But he'll get much better drive and much better run down the back straight. He should be able to draw level with Reed around turn number five. This is all going to help Delaney as well. Now what Dow's going to have to do is he's going to have to try and get to the inside as quickly as he can. Not going to work. And Reed gets the position away from Dow. And well, it's not over for Dow because here comes Delaney on the back of him. Reed doing a great job of just staying in the way of that apex there, blocking him out. Really good defense. A very, very good block pass, I would say. So you could see that uh, Dow was going to try for the uh, the switchback. Mm. It just it just didn't work. <clears throat> Gordon's uh, very close to Matt Munro. And five tenths, I believe it is. Yep. We'll swap over to that battle right now. So this is for the last step of the podium. Oh, so Cotter's not too far off. Um, oh. Matt Munro grabbed the dirt on the way into turn number one. I don't know how he's managed to hang on to it. Uh, looking out the back of Matt Munro's Nissan now. Oh, he runs it deep Ooh, big as lookout. well. Oh, they touch. Oh, oh that was awkward. Caught him, still, caught him still with him. He might uh, have a lunge into the final corner or around the outside. Matt Monroe's, Monroe's going to make him go the long way around. Oh, they're still banging door handles. <laughs> oh. Either one of them giving an inch. Nope. Oh, 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 they touch again. And oh, that'll finish oh. it. So Munro off the track and caught him off the track as well. So that was some hard racing. Neither of them really wanted to surrender that, so I don't think, uh, I think that's just a racing incident, really. Mm, definitely going to be one for the stewards' channel. Yeah, I think the stewards are going to be very, very busy after tonight. So, I don't know if you've uh, said this or not, but Richards is also DNF with Thornton. Yes, yes he has. So both yeah. Repsol cars are out, unfortunately. Down, Delaney is still uh, fighting away. Oh, actually, we got a we got a good three-way battle. I've just spotted it. Then we got uh, we're gonna quickly jump away from this. It's uh, sort of stabilised, but this is uh, kicking off. We got Corbel, Scarcella, and Wrath. Or battling away and this can only end in in one way I think oh 
Well, you've got the two at this stage with the reserve driver teammates, and now we've got Scarcella going down the inside. So, it certainly looks like a very tough place to make a move uh, into turn number one and two. Well, I mean, you've really only got two spots to do it. You've got the second last corner and then the hairpin. They're the main two, but you would have to you'd have to have a pair if you're going to try turn one. They're really, they are, they touched going through the hairpin. This will give Rath a chance on Scarcella. There really is only one fast line through turn one. It's very, very tight through there at speed. Here we go, Scarcella now. He's going to go for the send. And he's just not close enough this time by. Or maybe Corval's just a little bit better on the brakes this time. Scarcella's brake pads were just bright orange as he went into the uh, second last corner. Well, this will give Scarcella a run this time. Get the run down the hill. They're not going to go three wide, are they? Well, they are. They're going to go three wide into the hairpin. Here we go. Oh, I think... Uh... Uh, no. <laughs> and around oh. goes... Oh, Caldwell. Oh, he put in such a great drive in turn number one. Oh, there we go. <laughs> there we go. That was a send. I think his uh, throttle pedal has just got jammed. Just drove straight into the wall. Uh, I think once you get once you get out of control at that speed and you get onto the grass, you're a passenger. So, oh geez, the send it motorsport car, definitely send it. Yeah, I think that's thirty. <laughs> that's got to be thirty. <laughs> oh, back to this battle here, Scarcella and Rath. They're still s nose to tail. Uh, one of the Ford's FPV Ferguson. cars behind them. Ferguson? No, no, that's, um, that would be... Uh, Cortem. Cortem, yeah, yeah. Cortem will be lapping them. Of course, these guys are under no obligation just to jump out of the way. They can, they can sit there as, really, as long as they want till they get told to get out of the way by stewards. Hmm. Or race control. The thing is, Rath is facing the position. That, yeah, that is another factor. Big slide from Scarcella. Yeah. Actually, Rath is just going to back out of it and let uh, Corden through. I thought he might, I thought he would do that. Oh, and he's sent it. That is 31. I think he's just forgotten to break. Be honest. I think he uh, just got a little bit unsettled as to where. Where he might have just touched that grass. Yep, and yeah, there's, there's 32. Ooh. <laughs> oh no. That, that, was that, a, that was a close one. That was a close one. That was 32. <laughs> Almost 33 as well. <laughs> Are we going to get 40 in the last four laps? Oh, mate. That, that that would be like everyone, pretty much not everyone, but most people going off. Uh, well, Dowden Delaney is still fighting away. Anything can happen. So we're heading into the tail end of this race, and it's uh, been a really entertaining race, I have to say. Most of these races are pretty entertaining. Yeah, most of them are. Like, you look at the midfield, it's uh, always very exciting. Yeah, most of the top end and bottom... Oh, most of the top end, they just really drive away. And if it's anyone down low, they're most likely just make mistakes. Just drive in their own race at that point. Well, I mean, that's the thing about about racing it's not about not making mistakes it's about making less mistakes than everyone else yeah that, that, that is that, that's about right yeah oh, 
that was Nipperus. So he's uh, he's made a few setup changes and they haven't quite worked. But, uh, he'll still be quite happy with how he's uh, how he drove in race one. Uh, top 15 for Nipperus. He, he'd be pretty stoked with that. Yeah, well, most of these are. Uh Mostly the top 15 is really fast guys, so that was a close one. That was a little bit tight. Everyone's tires will be getting toward the end of their life, so yeah, that's it. All right, so here, so we're joined our race leader finally, Chris Munro. He's uh, took the lead on, uh, I believe it was lap number, lap number two, I think it was, and he hasn't really looked back since. So, uh, and also thank you to the Jackass for following. I believe that's uh, Jay Ferguson. Yeah. Oh, okay. A oh. Ferguson's son. Well, one, yeah. of, one of the Fergusons. <laughs> hey, oh. Ferguson. Oh, thank you very much for the follow, mate. Uh, much appreciated. Uh, hope you're enjoying the stream so far. What's left of the stream, anyway? We only got uh, what this lap and the next one. Yep. Uh, this, this guy's just been driving really well. He's just oh. away this oh, race. That was pull. Thirty-three. Was no thirty-two. We're up to thirty-two. Thirty-two uh, or thirty-three? Uh, thirty-two. And also, I should I should mention that I only started the count about uh, probably uh, three quarters of the way into grid two. Oh, so, Jesus. Yeah, so that's we, probably we, well we, over fifty there. Yeah, we've uh, we've definitely gone over fifty. So Matt Munro starts the final lap now. This will be a well-deserved win. Hasn't put a foot wrong. He. Uh, well, he's benefited from the reverse grid race, that's for sure. Yep. Did, and what actually happened to the first race for him? Uh, it was just... a weird one. Really weird one. He came through turn five uh, and just ran wide. And then he, he uh, unfortunately collected doubt. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, Chris Munro, he'll make up for a dreadful race one by taking out race two in dominating fashion. It's uh, Chris Munro in first position. He'll be glad with this win. And he's gonna cross the line with a nice burnout as well. Well, actually that's more like him locking the brakes rather than doing a line locker. Uh, Matt Cotter, the torpedo, sends it into second position and caught him into third. And we have Matt Munro coming around the corner. He's, uh, well, he's done pretty well to hold on to fourth after coming from the back of the grid. So. Wasn't Matt in third at the start of that lap? I uh, don't think he was, no. So there we go, we've got some donuts happening. Also, that was a really good uh, teamwork with the burnout there, Simmons, as well, at the end of race one. So, yeah. great teamwork. Felt fitting with the the one two finish. Yeah, that's absolutely true and correct. Uh, let's see, we can. Whoa, we got people just absolutely yeeting it into turn number one and two. Uh, let's have a look at our pit lane, and we'll go back to the pits just to get our final finishing order. So. From the very top, we have Chris Munro winning ahead of Matt Cotter, then Cortum. Uh, Matt Munro in fourth, and Peter Reed in fifth, rounding out the top five, obviously. Then we have Dowd, Delaney, Susanna, Keane, and Hum over the page. We've got Cycluna, Hill, Scarcella, Corbell, and Rath holding on to the top 15. Ferguson, Nichols, Nipperus, Strinsos, Poole, and then unfortunately our two DNFs, the two Repsol guys, uh, Richards and Thornton. So, geez, not a, not a bad night of racing, I have to say. So, yeah, it was a, well, we didn't really get to see the first race, but the second race was a very good one. Yeah. Uh, let's see, I'll bring up the stream end. So, well, thank you very much for joining us 
uh, everyone in, in the chat, and thank you very much to Turk Simmons and Ben McKenzie for joining me in the commentary box for race number two. Uh, much appreciated, guys. Uh, congratulations on your, well, first and second, respectively, in race two for grid two. Pity we didn't get to cover that one. But, uh, I'm sure you got replays to cover that. <laughs> um, yeah, so if you have enjoyed the stream out there, make sure you hit the uh, follow button, hit, hit the uh, notification bell, and if you think I've done a brilliant job, why don't you give us a subscription as well, like uh, yeah, uh, like Flubber has. Much appreciated, Flubber, for the three months again. Um, so yeah, we'll call the stream there. Thank you very much for joining us, and we'll catch you next time. Our next stream will be on Thursday night. It's round four of our Super GT League, uh, where well, Ben McKenzie will be joining us on the track, not in the commentary box, so that should be rather exciting. But, yeah, thank you very much for joining us. We'll catch you next time.